Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. I'm Doug Brown. There could be kickoff changes in the NFL next season. The competition committee also wants to eliminate hip drop tackling. Owners will vote on multiple rules changes as they're at their annual meeting next week. Police in Florida have been looking for Lions cornerback Cam Sutton for almost two weeks. He faces an arrest warrant over an alleged involvement in a domestic violence incident. The Dodgers beat the Padres 5-2 in South Korea today to start the new baseball season. Two hits and an RBI for Shohei Otani. Dodgers shortstop Mookie Betts on his new teammate. I don't know that I, I've really gotten to grasp it yet. Um, you know, really just seeing him get work, seeing him just do simple things. Well, what I think is simple, just better than everybody else. Yeah, that's uh, It's really neat. It's really neat to see, but I, I'm really looking forward to seeing all the things that he's going to accomplish. Mookie Betts on Unsportsmanlike. An NBA doubleheader on ESPN tonight starting at 7.30 Eastern. Bucks and Celtics followed by the Grizzlies and Warriors. Coverage of Bucks and Celtics also on ESPN Radio at 7 Eastern. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Candy. Coming up Thursday, if you haven't filled out your bracket, what are you waiting for? Time is running out, so don't be like me. Get it done. It's Unsportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR presented by Pluckers. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Hmm. You so. And Mr. Toby Tom, please. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Oh, by the way, it's a hump day. Yeah. It's hump day. Let's hump, everybody. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Major League Baseball season started today. Hump day. That's a little weird, actually. It's hump day. A lot weird. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? They're playing at like four in the morning in Seoul, Korea. Hump day. South Korea. It's hump day. And then they're going to come back and play spring training games. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Nobody ever accused Major League Baseball of having it all figured out. Hump day. LSU basketball season ends. It's hump day. LSU baseball bounces back. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? We got Bourbon Dictionary. Hump day. We got the LSU football team back on the practice field. It's hump day. We got Pluckers trivia. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, We Mike? got Mama Scone making her triumphant return. Hump day. We got a lot to do, so let's get to it. Let's begin as we do every single day. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. Well, the LSU men's basketball season came to an end on Tuesday, first round of the NIT. The Tigers lose to North Texas. A disappointing loss, no way around it. You were at home uh, against a team that you'd already beaten earlier this year, 66-62. They came in and uh, they kind of punched you a little bit. 84-77 to was the final as the Mean Green uh, beat LSU. It may be the most uh, concerning part of this game and listen, let's be very clear. The bigger picture here is the program as a whole, not what happened on Tuesday. But let me take a moment here, talk about what happened Tuesday night. We'll do the postmortem on the season and look ahead to next year as well. But Matt McMahon was here with us on Monday, and one of the things he talked about is, look, this was a, this was a North Texas team that lacked a, a true 
big, a back to the basket big, and they they played a lot of guards. They like to spread you out. They shoot a lot of threes. And they like to slow the pace of the game. Remember when they played in the fourth playing date of the season, LSU won that game 66-62. So Matt McMahon wanted to push tempo. He wanted a higher scoring game. Well, he got it. It just didn't go his way. And yeah, it was three pointers by North Texas. Um, which started to stretch the lead for the Mean Green about midway through the first half. But it was North Texas outscoring LSU 36-30 in the paint and out-rebounding LSU. That was the difference, and Matt McMahon knew it. Their physicality really bothered us at the rim. That's why I mentioned the 16-37 from two-point range. Uh, I thought when we drove it and drew two and, and made the right play and moved the ball, we got some open threes and guys shot it well. Uh, 15 assists, which has been a good number for us on the year. One of, probably one of our higher assist games. Uh, but some of those tough twos where we were unable to finish at the basket, uh, they made us pay on the other end. Um, so the season comes to an end. Um, and, and it's a weird thing because if you go look at the box score, um, it's it's almost what and what. Uh each team made 11 threes. Each team shot better than 45% from the floor. Um, North Texas made 15 free throws. LSU made 12. The big the free throw attempts were the, were the difference. North Texas attempted 23. LSU was 12 of 12. Assist, 15 to 13. A steals, 10 to 9. Blocks, 4 to 3. Like So much of the box score was even. It was just North Texas grew a big lead by virtue of, of shooting the three, and the LSU couldn't quite catch up. But... That really is is ancillary, man. It, look, if LSU had gone on a nice run in the NIT, that would have been great. But really, the, the mission this season was to show progress from a year ago. And by and large, LSU did that. And Matt McMahon, after the loss, was asked to sort of reflect on what his team learned uh, this season in 2023. Well, I just look at the totality of the season at, at this point. You know, I'm really proud of what our players have been able to accomplish. It was a challenging season in a lot of ways. I thought our players responded all year long with great resiliency, handled success, handled failure well, uh, found a way, learned how to win some tough games. They have the second biggest turnaround in, in Power 6 basketball this year when it comes to conference wins and to ultimately get to the postseason. Uh, the NIT is not the tournament we strive to play in here at LSU, so we got to get better. we got to build. we got to keep building, and that's what this offseason will be about, keep building the program uh, to take the next step, which for us is getting to the NCAA tournament next year. Next year, which is realistic. Only South Carolina had a better season-to-season -season turnaround in conference wins than, than LSU did. You went from two to nine conference wins. That's incredible. In, in, in a vacuum, in the big picture, whatever, it was an incredible turnaround for Matt McMahon's squad. And I, I tip my cap to him. Now, how do you get to the big dance next year? Now, I don't know that you're going to expect a plus seven year-to-year -year increase in your conference wins. I don't think you're going to go from 9 to 16 and 2. Now, it's worth noting, in Will Wade's second year, that's exactly what they did. They went to the NIT in his first year and then were 16 and 2 in the league, won the SEC in in his second season. So, you get the right guys in tow, anything can happen, especially in an era of a transfer portal, but you're going to lose a ton. You're going to lose a lot of key contributors. You're losing Jordan Wright. You're losing Will Baker. You're losing Trey Hannibal, who was awesome at the end of the season. Amwani Wilkinson, Derek Fountain, all these guys that were seniors, they're gone. But the flip side of it is, man, you saw tremendous improvement this year from Tyrell Ward, from, from uh, uh, Jalen Reed. Does Carlos Stewart come back? That would be a huge boost if he came back off an of injury and contributed next year. Mike Williams, the second half of the year, was a really good player for you. And you have two signees already in tow with Robert Miller, 6'10", the number 12 power forward in the country, already signed, and Curtis Givens out of Montverde, a four-star, number 79 nationally, the eighth best point guard in the country, already signed. You get two top 80 players in the country already signed for next year. You got some young talent coming back. You're going to hit the portal, and now you have a story to tell. Now you have a story to tell. Now you can go to recruits and say, hey, look at the improvement we made. Don't come here to help us lay a foundation. Help us get to the big dance next year. It's something Matt McMahon has to sell that's not just a vision. There's something tangible, tangible results that he can go show recruits, 
and transfers. Look at the transformation Will Baker made this year. Jordan Wright, look at the job they did in their one year at LSU with how Matt McMahon used him. It was fantastic to see. So my sincere hope is that they go hit the portal hard. And Matt McMahon obviously has to drum up NIL support for men's basketball. It's interesting how it's worked at LSU where a lot of the coaches have sort of acted in their own silos. You know, Kim Mulkey has really pounded the pavement to generate NIL funds for LSU women. Jay Johnson, same with the baseball program. You know, Brian Kelly with football. Matt McMahon's going to have to get that support with basketball. But when you have a season like this and you're showing progress and improvement, it's much easier to go hat in hand, knocking on doors and asking for help. And this team, you know, Matt McMahon has a, a compelling a compelling case, a compelling story to tell after this season. No, I'm, I'm not going to do backflips and, and say hang the banner over an NIT performance. But if you can't acknowledge the, the year-to-year progress, uh, that's on you because it's pretty remarkable what Matt McMahon was able to do with this program from year one to year two. I'm looking forward to seeing how that continues to build and grow in year three and beyond. All right, it's after further review. Our show open every day is brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy in Louisiana with the great taste of Bud Light, the official beer of the LSU Tigers. Uh, up next, of course, will be the women at the PMAC for the opening round of the women's NCAA tournament. First two rounds at the PMAC. You're going to be out at the Maravich Center, of course. Make sure you drink plenty of uh, ice cold Bud Light, or if you're going to be at a crawfish boil or hanging out with your family and friends, watching the baseball team or whatever it may be, always reach for the official beer of the LSU Tigers, the official beer of AFR. Our friends over at Mockler, amazing job that they've done as supporter of the Tigers and of our, our greater Baton Rouge community and all of South Louisiana. Homa, of course, now uh, with Southwest Bev in uh, being uh, assumed by uh, by Mockler in, uh, in Lake Charles, servicing basically Alexandria Valle. It's awesome. Thrilled to be partnered with our friends over at Mockler Beverage. Make sure you drink easy with the official beer of AFR, Bud Light. Okay, let me knock out a quick break. When we come back, so much talk about an expanded 14-team playoff. Is there synergy that can exist between humans and computers? Bill Connolly, a friend of ours from ESPN, took a stab at that. He's going to join us next to sort, of, to sort out how that may work. And uh, Kim Mulkey coming up in one hour from right now. We're glad you're here. It's AFR. AFR. Get Gordon. Get it done. So cool yesterday to have uh, Aaliyah Finnegan and Connor McClain, a couple of uh, LSU gymnasts in studio with us, a couple of members of the G team. The G, G team keeps expanding. Uh, Alex Malazzo, Hayden Travinsky joining the G team as well. Listen, so many uh, Tigers and student athletes from many different programs have joined up with Gordon as members of the G team, giving them a great platform and an opportunity to showcase their, their talent, their sport, and also Spread the great news about Gordon McKernan injury attorneys. Listen, if you've been injured in an accident, it's not your fault. Do what injured people in our state have done for more than 30 years. Go to getgordon.com. That's getgordon.com. Getgordon.com with offices all over the state of Louisiana. You can always call if you'd rather do that. 888-8888. 888-8888. Again, 888-8888. Or go to getgordon.com. We always tell you as well about Gordon Gives, the charitable arm of Gordon McKernan injury attorneys if you want to see all the philanthropic ways that Gordon and his team give back. You know what to do. Get Gordon and get it done. It was a human day Barefoot children play Looking for the summer shade Time to slip Like cyber stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Oh, there it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further. Like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. 
Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Flucker's Wing Bar, open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Flucker's Wing Bar, if you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. We know college football playoff is going to expand to 12 teams this year, and then presumably in 2026, 14 teams. But how are they going to choose those teams? Is there a possibility of blending uh human subjectivity and computer objectivity, i.e. the BCS. Uh, A self-described nerd and a guy who's always been very generous with his time here is Bill Conley. Uh, He created the SP Plus rankings over at ESPN.com. And uh, he tackled this in a great piece up at ESPN.com. If you want to go read it, he's good enough to join us now. Bill, we always appreciate you, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. How about you? I'm great. Bill, first of all, does ESPN just give you carte blanche to say, hey, like, what sort of like nerdy number (laughs) stuff do you want to come up with today? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we agree on the topic, and then they're just like, yeah, go crazy. And uh, I'm sure there's a limit there somewhere, but I, I guess I haven't found it yet. Before we, we dive into this, just um, just to lay our cards on the table, do you prefer a, a four-team, a 12-team, a 14-team playoff? Do you have a preference on format? Well, I think... I mean, no, I, I, I'm, I, I, I know in advance, like, however big we make this thing, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to yes. figure out a way to get excited about it. I was pitching a 16-team playoff for Football Outsiders in, like, 2009. So, like, it's fine. I hate, though, hate the idea of the 14-teamer, knowing that it came from the Big Ten and SEC, basically knowing they're trying to rig the system and get two more at-larges and, and make sure there are only two bids for teams to benefit from. They're just really – they're going to have the best conferences. They're going to have the most teams in here. And now they're doing all this. They're trying to rig the draw, rig. You know, they floated out there the whole, like, we should just get the buys every year no matter what thing. They're going to make even a higher percentage of the money from it guaranteed, much less whatever you get for appearances. They're, they're really going too far with all of this. But the actual size of the playoff, I, you know, no, I'm, I, I know myself well enough to know that I'll get into whatever. Let's, I, and I, Bill, I, I completely agree with you in that sense. Like, people who fret over it, we're all going to watch and love it, and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. We're going to get on campus playoff games. It's like you're going to get great matchups. Yes, it's going to be wonderful, however, it shakes out. And yes, there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. But I've long advocated for some semblance of objectivity in, yeah. in as opposed to, as I term it, uh, a bunch of self-important nerds in a hotel ballroom in suburban Dallas deciding things like game control. It, it's just it's nonsensical. So how how can we make this work? What was your what was your thesis here, Bill? Yeah, I think with this piece that I, I put up, I uh, whenever that was earlier this week, yesterday or something. Um, the general idea was, you know, when when they came up with the BCS formula to begin with, and for for starting in 1998. Granted, they tweaked it a million times. Every time people yelled at them, they changed something about the way computers are. Uh, you know, incorporated in there. But the general idea was we need the subjectivity of the voters and the objectivity of the numbers. That was the whole point. And most of what we hated about the BCS over its, uh, what, 15-year existence was 
that they could only pick two teams. It was the whoever finished third. We would have, you know, if they were picking a four team playoff starting in 1998, they're really, we would have, we would have gotten mad about whoever number five is occasionally. But just looking through those years, we wouldn't have gotten nearly as mad about that as we did about, you know, unbeaten Auburn getting left out or all these things that happened uh, through that period. So if, they had been if they had had a BCS formula for selecting a four team playoff in ninety eight, we would still have the formula. We would have never gotten rid of it. We would have never like there wouldn't have been a reason to. So why not the core concepts there were, you know, basically a split between the polls and and computer ratings of some form. I have no idea why like we could absolutely do that. Even if there's still a committee that does the poll voting part of the process. Um, you know, because I mean, obviously the AP got out of the BCS. They, you know, who knows what would, you know, who would be willing to do that. So let's have a committee do half of it, mm-hmm. and then figure out. Uh, you know, we got a lot more computers now than we did in 1998, so we can probably figure out a pretty good blend for the other half too. I, I would absolutely go that route. And Bill, and you brought up a great point in the piece as well, Bill, which was really there was only two years of the the four team playoff where the committee had a tough choice, and it was the first yeah. year, and incidentally. The last year. So yeah. <laughs> what? walk us through what made those difficult and how it might have been different if there were a different formula. Yeah, so in 2014, I guess in the end with 2014, I didn't even, it wasn't even a bad decision that the committee made. It just looked weird because yes. you know, TCU is third. They go out and they beat Iowa State by 52 points and they fall to six. And that was just <laughs> because we had the weekly ranking show. We knew they, it wasn't like the committee just spit them out as six at the end, and we didn't know the process that went into it because I think we would have kind of accepted that. Mm-hmm. It made a little bit of sense. Ohio State looks great at the end of the year, and Baylor beat them head to head. So there you go. But the fact that they dropped after winning a game by such a large margin just felt strange, and and it was a reminder that we are this was a very subjective process, and and you know we don't necessarily know all the thinking that goes into some of these decisions, but. That was weird. And then last year, I just, I'm never going to say, I, I realized, you know, we got a great Alabama Michigan game out of the deal. I realized ratings were great. I realized, you know, the SEC champion got in and, and people are going to, a lot of people are going to say that's the way it should be. But I, it was still just absolutely unforgivable to me to leave out an unbeaten Florida State. Uh, and it will always have been a terrible decision on the committee's part. It was groupthink, it was overthink, whatever you want to call it. Um, Florida State did not won a power conference, not as good as the SEC, but a power conference, didn't lose and didn't get to play until they lost afterwards. That, that should at least be a thing for the power conferences. Uh, and, and they didn't get to do that. And I think that was a shame. They then went out and laid a gigantic egg, obviously, in the Orange Bowl. As soon as they got punched in the mouth, they were done. But they still earned that spot, and they weren't given it. And I think that was a massive black spot for what the committee was capable of. I agree. I can't believe I became a uh, a giant Florida State apologist. Like I, <laughs> I mean, the amount of Florida State fans who – look, after the first week when Florida State beat LSU, I got clowned for talking about receivers – by the end of the season, Florida State fans loved me because I was the one waving the banner for right. them. But Bill, not only that, <laughs> they beat two SEC teams in the non-conference. They beat yeah. LSU and Florida. I mean, it was, yes. Imagine that, winning every game you play and some people in a room decide you're not good enough. It's, it was absurd. Yeah. So how would, Bill Conley's our guest, by the way, from ESPN. He's on Twitter at ESPN underscore Bill C. I'll give him a follow. So I don't even know if this is something that will even be considered, Bill. I sure hope it is. But how would a formula blending what we had with the BCS and what we have with the committee look? So I found, uh, I've been fiddling with this like late in a given season these last couple of years. I've been fiddling with my own kind of BCS-ish kind of formula. And I simplified it for this piece, uh, for, for the for the, this week's column, which is just basically, you know, it's 50% poll rankings, which, you know, again, we can do the CFP rankings uh, instead, but I was just using the polls. And then 50%, what amounted to three parts uh, strength of record, which comes from FPI, which comes from ESPN, and then one part my SP plus ranking. So you have like three quarters most deserving, one quarter quality. Um, and just that, I, I started fiddling with that just out of curiosity. And what it gives you is it, it's about 90% the same as far as the top 10 rankings go or so. It's about 90% the same of what, as what the committee does. But it comes up with some pretty interesting exceptions, like having TCU over Baylor in 2014, like, of course, having Florida State over Alabama last year. Um, it, it basically gets us most of the way there, and it kind of highlights the 
differences that we see with the committee sometimes. They always seem to overrate the Big 12. Uh, there was always a 10-2 and two team that should have been like four spots higher uh, mm. in the Big 12. There was always, the, I mean, the, 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 it goes without saying that the committee has never, ever respected the group of five. And so whatever, you know, the best group of five teams, he's about five spots lower than they should be. Um, but for the most part, it, it, it's consistent enough with what the committee produced that you're kind of like, well, you know, we did that with a formula. Why wouldn't we continue to do that with a formula instead of, you know, paying guys to, you know, 13 people to go show up at the Gaylord each weekend in Dallas? <laughs> I, I agree that um, there there would sometimes be uh, argument over who deserved the number three spot. You mentioned 04 Auburn, right? Um, yeah. There were fewer years, even still, as we mentioned, where there was conversation over who should be number four. Um, how much of an argument do you think we'll have moving forward with the 12, potentially 14-team playoff about the teams that get left out? Well, it, it obviously gets diminished every time we lower the bar. Like we, we, There were plenty of cases where it was very clear picking two teams wasn't enough because the difference between number two and number three or one, two, and three was tiny. And, and, and you were – you know whether we're talking about a, a 2000 with Miami, Florida State, uh, whether you're talking about 2011 with Alabama, Oklahoma State. They're just that was that was tough. That was too. That was, that was a hard bar right there. Four works most of the time. Again, like you know, for eight of ten years, or at least especially six out of ten years, the calls were very easy to make. So that was a pretty decent bar. I just and, and we go down to 12 now. Or you know, eleven plus the group of five champion. However, that works out. Um, obviously, there's going to be a case to be made for whoever gets left out. But when I went back and I, I, I ran like my SP plus numbers, win probabilities for all these playoffs that have happened so far, and if the bar was there, we're talking about the difference between one team having a one percent chance of winning the title and another team having a one percent chance. Mm-hmm. And the further down you go, the like the lower. Obviously, you want to make the playoff, and it's great if you're that number 12 team that gets in, but it's still not going to make as big a difference. So I, I, we're going to we're going to throw a fit. We're going to yell because that's what we do, but it's not going to be as big a difference as, as leaving out the number five team or leaving out the yeah. number three team. Bill, last thing, and I know you noted this in, in the piece, and it's up at ESPN.com if you want to go read it. Um, do you think that, uh, or, or what would be the best way to change the makeup of the, the college yeah. football playoff selection committee? Yeah, I think that's I, I did kind of want to point that out. It was kind of almost an add on at the end of the piece. But you know, seven of the thirteen members of the committee right now are active athletic directors. And A, mm-hmm. I hope they're busy enough that they can't watch as much football as I do on a given Saturday. It seems like they've got a pretty important job already. But also, you know, why is that? Like the former coaches, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, they can evaluate teams, even if they're not really trained to tell to, to evaluate teams so much as scout them and, and whatnot. There's still, you know, there, there's an expertise there that makes sense. They always have former players on the committee. That makes sense. But with a lot of the athletic directors, I don't know why we've gone in that route instead of whether it's more retired media folks, whether it's finding active media folks who don't have any sort of conflicts of interest involved. That, that's uh, trickier than probably it seems, but uh, that would be an interesting route. I was talking about, you know, if we're getting these, these the nerd formulas, so to speak, back involved, why wouldn't we have a nerd on the committee themselves? I, I, I listed a few there, Brian Fromo, my old uh, co-worker at Football Outsiders and some others, Jeff Sagarin. Yeah. Um, it was a pretty thankless job, obviously, but if, if one of them was willing to do it and just bring a completely different a- outlook to the table, I don't know why we wouldn't do that. We basically have two influences um, for the most of the committee, players and co- uh, athletic directors, or excuse me, coaches and athletic directors. So, yeah, just expanding the influences a little bit, getting some more diversity of thought in the room can't hurt. Might not change anything. I don't know, but it, it certainly can't hurt. Bill Conley for College Football Grand Emperor. That's what I'm for. Let's do that. Uh, in the meantime, we can just read your stuff and follow you on Twitter, X, uh, at ESPN underscore Bill C. I'll give him a follow. Good stuff, Bill. I always appreciate the visit, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Take care. Be well. That is a Bill Conley from ESPN. It's AFR presented by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, LMFJ.com. It's LMFJ.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. If uh, you've not been by Lee Michaels, and gentlemen, if you're thinking of popping the question this spring, or maybe you just want a beautiful gift to Thriller, maybe an anniversary coming up, Get on by and see our friends over at Lee Michaels. You'll always thrill her with a gift in the red box. Uh, rarely will you ever go to a charitable event in the Baton Rouge area or parts of our state where you don't see 
the red box as a uh, as a donation because they're so charitable and have been so invested in our community for four decades. It's Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, lmfj.com, lmfj.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, where you always get the Lee Michaels experience. Two locations in Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Lafayette, Shreveport, and online, lmfj.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Uh, interesting stuff there from Bill Conley. I think you know where I fall on it. I mean, I, I would be completely fine reverting to the BCS rankings, the BCS formula. It, it the, the problem wasn't the BCS formula. The problem was there were only two teams. 2004 immediately comes to mind when you had undefeated Oklahoma and undefeated Southern Cal that played for a championship and undefeated Auburn didn't even get a swing. Well, it wouldn't have mattered what the formula would have said. There would have been an undefeated team left out because you only had two spots. That's cured and solved with an expanded playoff. So I I would be perfectly fine going back to the, that formula, which they were very good about tweaking. That was one of the things that was very uh, self-aware with college football at that time. They, when something went wrong, they said, okay, well, let's tweak it. Let's adjust it. They were willing to be you know, uh, pliable, and they would change, which was great. Uh, most people just got caught up in the fan narrative of the computers, the computers, the computers. Oh, we're deciding a champion with a computer. No. In the past, you're deciding champion on the field. In the past, it was you were deciding a champion with a bunch of sports writers with their their pens and their their ballots. It's just how you got to that that number. Give me twelve. It's less concerning. The teams that deserve to be in will be in. All right. Uh, it's after further review. Hump Day Show is brought to you by Pluckers. We'll knock out a quick break. Uh, we'll come back. Uh, some significant news out of Tuscaloosa. We'll get to that as we continue. And I do want to talk about that uh, the Clemson lawsuit as well, if you haven't heard. Uh, could more tumult be coming to, uh, to college football? Kim Mulkey in 45 minutes from right now. Bourbon Dictionary with Cl- Taylor Calandro in about 15 minutes. We still got to get to, um, my goodness, recapping LSU football practice from earlier today. Uh, Wilson Alexander here in an hour to do that. We're going to talk about the LSU baseball win over Louisiana Tech. We are loaded today. Glad you're here. It's AFR. AFR. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Brack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. 
Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar, open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Remember, you can always text the show, 225-396-4400, 396-4400, I just got this a text from Dave Zastro. I hope he doesn't mind me saying. Dave said, hey, Matt, had to drop you a text. Say thank you. I grew up in NOLA, moved out of the state in the late 80s. I'm a Saints fan, LSU. So much easier for me to feel connected to my Louisiana by listening to your content, AFR and Morning Scone. I value your content, your commentary highly. The AFR show is my favorite in radio, which includes Musso and Paul, of course. How about that? There you go, guys. But you can say thanks to Dave if he likes you. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that, man. Say thanks to Dave. Thank you, Dave. Said also, uh, the home field quality with Ask Rock. He writes, parenthetically, nice lady. That's my wife. We do that on Morning Scone. Occasionally, as well as Drew popping in is awesome. Truly, thank you, Dave Z in Missouri. Appreciate that, Dave. Thank you. Absolutely. But that, Dave, we've got listening in Mizzou. Give him a shout out. See? And Dave may not know if that's actually some of y'all wonder if that's actually me on the text line. I tell you, it is. That's me replying to you with my fat thumbs right there. But thank you to Dave. That's why we do it for people like Dave. Otherwise, I'm just a guy sitting in a room talking to himself, which is weird. I I do that too, though. I mean, I I, I always talk to myself. It's that a nice weird. exercise. That's weird. I find it helpful sometimes. So Chase Young agreed to terms with the Saints earlier this week, and we were really excited. We're like, hey, look at that. The Saints went bargain bin shopping and found a treasure. At least a, something that could be really good. We're like, look at that, man. All the cap issues and everything and the former number two overall pick. The NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year back in 2020 just falls into your lap. Like, man, they scored one. Heck yeah. And then 24 hours later, we realized the guy's got a neck procedure. And that's why there was a really soft market for him. Well, today, this is uh, sort of another edition of As the World Turns, or As the Chase Young Contract Situation Turns. We learned the contract uh, details for Chase Young. And some are, are applauding the Saints because there are some protections built in here. I'll very quickly go through it because I know most of you don't actually care about contracts. And my feeling always is, I don't care about the money. It ain't my money. It's Gail Benson's money. The only thing, that, so I don't care. The only thing I care about is the cap structure because cap structure equals strategy. It is why every year we have the conversation about the Saints going through their annual exercise of restructuring deals because of what that does and doesn't allow you to do. Better way to say it, because of how that limits you in free agency because of your ability to spend against the cap. So again, I don't care that they gave him $13 million guaranteed. I only care how it's structured. So here's what's interesting. Uh, $7.99 million is tied to per game roster bonuses. 
So he gets a signing bonus of $1.86 million, a base salary of $2.7 million, a workout bonus of four hundred fifty dollars and his per-game roster bonus is $470,000. So if they cut him, he still gets all the money. He gets If they cut him, he gets all of that money. But if Chase Young is on the roster, but is a game-day scratch, if he does not play, he does not get that money. So basically, if he makes the team, but is hurt and can't play, he doesn't get his four hundred seventy k per game. So in total, that could dramatically knock down the number. He is definitely, no doubt whatsoever, getting $4.56 million. And it could, if he plays in all 17 games, go up to $13 million. Provided he's on the roster and is and is healthy, so some may applaud that. I don't care. Uh, maybe that helps alleviate a little bit in the structure. My bigger question is: Does this mean you keep six edge rushers, and/or does this mean is defensive end, pass rusher, edge rusher off the board for you at fourteen? My assumption is that it is. I mean, you're not going edge rusher at fourteen. You're not picking Dallas Turner or Jared Verse or Latu from UCLA at 14, the best edge rushers. Now, I think Dallas Turner likely already going to be off the board when you pick at 14. But when I look at the at the position, you've got Cameron Jordan, Carl Granderson, Tano Passanio, Peyton Turner, Isaiah Foskey, and now Chase Young. That's six. Let me remind you that last year when you went to the, the 53-man roster, you went through roster cuts after camp. You kept five. It's the first five I mentioned. Jordan, Granderson, Passanio, Turner, Foskey. Those are the five you kept. And now you've added Chase Young, a sixth. Are you keeping all six of those guys? If you do, if you're keeping six defensive ends, which is hard to justify, but if you keep six defensive ends, then you're going to have one fewer player somewhere else. Do you keep one less receiver? I don't know. But remember... Last year, also, Nico Lalos had a really good camp and got cut, and Kyle Phillips got cut as well, and then they ended up signing the practice squad. But it's fair to say, of those six, someone is going to be the odd man out. Last year, they kept five. This year, they likely keep five again, and I'm assuming Chase Young is going to be one of those five. So Jordan, Granderson, Passanio, Turner, Foskey, Young, really, it comes down to the middle three, Passanio, Turner, and Foskey. And I don't know that you're going to punt on Isaiah Foskey at the start of year two. Now, it wouldn't be unprecedented. You did that with Stanley Jean Baptiste. Remember, he was a second-round pick. He made the roster year one, never got on the field, and you cut him in camp year two. You completely wasted a second-round pick. But maybe you give Isaiah Foskey another go because you feel like you know enough about Peyton Turner. Three years of Peyton Turner, he has played a total of 15 games. Let me say that again slowly. Three years, total 15 games played. Five as a rookie, eight in year two, and then just two games played last year. As much as it would sting to cut a first-round pick after year three, where is the justification for keeping him? He hasn't been healthy, and when he has played for you, he hasn't been effective. So... That, for me, is the odd man out. You can keep trying to get more out of it because you used a first-round pick, or you can just acknowledge, hey, cut your losses and move on, like they were able to do with Stanley Jean Baptiste a couple of years ago. In my opinion, it, because the other thing is you, you could sign Tano, or you could cut Tano Passanio. But Passanio has been reliable for you. He's been available. He has been a productive player as a rotational piece, and he's a... This is an odd reason to keep a guy, but remember, Tano Passanio is 6'7". One of the great benefits is his ability to block kicks. You line him up over the center, he holds up his hands, the ball comes up, and when he jumps, he can block He can block kicks. So there's at least value to that that Peyton Turner doesn't give you because he ain't ever on the field. So I mean, year three of you know, entering year four of his rookie deal, you're certainly not picking up the fifth-year option for Peyton Turner my guess is he's going to be the odd man out unless if he's healthy and just is absolutely unconscious during training camp. Peyton Turner's probably the odd man out, and we're going to have a conversation as to whether or not he's the worst draft pick in Saints history. Because for me right now, and I know people talk about Russell Irk, Slavin, and Alex Molden, but some of these guys played. For me, Jonathan Sullivan's the worst pick ever. 
Back in 03, he was the sixth overall pick out of Georgia. And in his career, he played in 14 games as a rookie, seven games in 04, and then in 05, the Katrina year, he played in 15 games. But after you know those three seasons in the NFL, his, whole, his career was over. He was cut in New Orleans, didn't get picked up by anybody else. He was done after three years. Three years out of the league, the number six overall pick. That's 78 tackles, one and a half sacks in his career. Jonathan Sullivan's the worst pick you've ever had, in my opinion. But Peyton Turner's going to be knocking on the door trying to join, join that class uh, if he gets cut in this year's camp, which I think there's a really good chance he will. Okay, it's after further review. We'll knock out a quick break. We're glad to have you aboard with us here. Love telling you about Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. ShawBillsTire.com. You know where to find them. 18 locations across South Louisiana and online at ShawBillsTire.com. You can find the location nearest you. You can schedule service online. You can shop tires online at ShawBillsTire.com. Again, ShawBillsTire.com. One of the really easy things to do with ShawBills as well, if you go to the website, there's a chat bubble in the bottom right-hand corner. You tap that chat bubble, you pick the location nearest you, and just like that, in a few seconds, bada-bing, bada-bang, bada-boom, you're chatting with a ShawBills service member in just a couple of seconds. It's at ShawBillsTire.com. ShawBillsTire.com for more than 50 years. ShawBills, where we keep you rolling. All right, y'all, let me knock out our final break of hour number one. When we come back, uh, Taylor Calandro will be here for Bourbon Dictionary, so get your booze questions in. Email us, tweet us, text us. Lots of ways you can get your questions in. Kim Mulkey, 30 minutes from right now. We're looking forward to that. Wilson Alexander with an LSU football practice report next hour. A ton to do, and glad you're hanging out on AFR. AFR. AFR is brought to you by River City's One Hour Air, where they're always on time, or you don't pay a dime. 752-0001, 752-0001, or onehourbr.com. Hey, remember, yes, we had a little cold snap. But you know spring is here. This is always We always get one, one final cold snap. It always happens. Spring is here, which means summer is around the bend, which means those triple-digit temps are going to be here before you know it, and they are going to be oppressive, just beating down on you and your home central AC every single day. I cannot recommend highly enough. Call River City's One Hour Air. Have one of their technicians come out to the house for your preseason AC tune-up. They'll come out. They'll make sure your AC is clean and running efficiently for the coming warm weather months because in time, it'll cost you money if it's running inefficiently and this will extend the life of your unit. It's River City's One Hour Air. 752-0001, 752-0001, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. 
They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar, open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar, if you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. They're the gang with the slang. This is Bourbon Dictionary with Matt Moscona and Taylor Calandro. Revenue right of hour number one, let's do it. It's booze questions in. Taylor Calandro joins us. You can ask him anything about anything. Email us, tweet us, text us in the 225 396 4400, 396 4400, 396 4400. How are you, dude? Good. How you doing, Matt? Good, man. What's new? Um, can I tell you what's not new first so I can sure. just get it out of the way? Sure. Um, we do not have Crown Blackberry. Okay, can stock. you? I'm so glad you brought this up. So uh, last Monday, I'm having a meeting with uh, with Chuck over at Action Industries. Great dude, great people. And he asks me about this, Crown Blackberry. And I'm going, man, I have no idea. I've heard of Crown Apple, the Crown XO, all that stuff. I'm not really a Crown drinker. I don't know. Well, he proceeded to tell me, show me the, 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 the bottle. What is, what is this? Um, ooh, it's tough. Uh, it's Crown Blackberry. Uh, it, I tried it last week, man. Um, you would have a hard time convincing me it's whiskey if I didn't actually see it come out of the bottle. Okay. Sweet. It's just, um, it, it, it's just straight blackberry. Um, man, it's, it, it, there was no whiskey in there. It's just like the most bizarre thing. Um, but it, it's impossible to get currently. We we got a few cases last week. You know, we actually got them... <clears throat> I think on the day of the show last week, and I was going to tell the audience that, but you weren't in town, so. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's just crowned with blackberry. Um, uh, it's not good. It's not for me. The, Don't leave it there. So real quick, but Crown is Canadian whiskey, and Canadian whiskey. You correct me if I'm wrong, but Canadian whiskey tends to be a lower proof whiskey anyway. So I mean, it's, yeah. it's just it's going to be it's going to be lighter. It's just not going to be as strong and potent and full bodied. Um, as as an American whiskey would, so I mean, Crown already has a lighter profile, and then you're going to throw you know, a blackberry flavoring into it. I mean, it's pretty natural that it's not going to be a, a potent whiskey, like oaky whiskey flavor, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's no oakiness at all, man. It, it's just like it's if it, if it ever becomes a thing, it's going to become like a shot. I mean, it is it, it's seventy proof. But yes, uh, it, 70 proof. Oh my gosh. Um, excuse me. 35 proof, 7% alcohol. 7% alcohol. Sorry. Um, anyway. No, th- um, it would be 35 ABV, 70, per- 70 proof. You had it right. What did you just say? You, 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 you confused. You had oh, it right I the first time. You were correcting me. No, no, no. You, you no, I was me. just laughing, saying seventy proof is so oh, low. Yes. Okay. No, I thought you were correcting me. No, you no, no, no. Me when you did that. Um, no. So yeah, it's very low proof. There's not. There's no alcohol bite to it at all. It was really sweet and kind of medicinal. Um, hmm. But I, I didn't spit it out. <laughs> okay. It's uh, just not for me, man. I hear it's you. Not for me, and I don't, I don't think it would be for you. But there. It's, it's for some people, for sure. Uh, apparently a lot because we can't get it or let, keep it in stock. Uh, people are asking about it, so they've done a good job marketing it or whatever they've done. Right, let's get some it's questions. It's overtaken Blanton's for us. No as way. Far as questions. Uh, no absolutely. way. The, <laughs> the last month, man, Crown Blackberry. We, we've got sticky notes all over the office saying we don't have Crown Blackberry to remind everybody. <laughs> That's too funny. All right, let's get, some, let's get to some questions. Scott Pataro said, ask Taylor, where can I find Colonel E.H. Taylor? 
Uh, the same place you can find crown blackberries. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's worth noting because some people ask, like, these are allocated bottles. Like, how you just you get oh, so I few mean, of them, so they're never going to be on the shelf. Yeah, you can trip over small batch uh, EH Taylor every now and then. Very rarely. Um, anything beyond that is going to be super hard and probably in raffles and stuff like that. Yeah. But you can trip over small batch if you get really lucky every now and then. Uh, Brandon Frederick said, Crown Blackberry and Lemonade is fire. But that doesn't sound like something I'm interested in drinking. That's the cocktail they're promoting with it, and okay. I haven't tried it. It just sounds really, really sweet to me. John Wilson, we got a minute. John Wilson, uh, are they going to have any Paradise Park strawberry in stock soon? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, speaking of strawberry, we got Catahoula Common strawberry this week from, okay. from Gnarly Barley, another strawberry beer. But I'm Re- not sure about Paradise Park. 30 seconds, really good question. Eric Gotro asked Taylor, what's the difference between barrel proof and cask strength bourbons? There is none. Uh, as far as I know, it's just nomenclature that people use. It's 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 the same thing. It's It comes out the cask, it's cask strength, it's barrel strength, it's the same thing. It's just nomenclature. Taylor Calandro from Calero's, Calandro's Bourbon Dictionary. Thank you, dude. All right, Matt. See you. All right, man. Be well. Uh, Kim Mulkey in 15, 20 minutes from right now. Stick around and save our. AFR. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot. I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip. Like Cyrus Dumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation.
This is SportsCenter. I'm Doug Brown. NFL owners will vote next week on proposed rule changes, including kickoffs that would resemble what the XFL used last year. Also, the hope to eliminate hip drop tackles. The vote will come next week at the owners' annual meeting. The Jets sign wideout Mike Williams to a one-year deal. ESPN's Adam Schefter reports it's worth up to $15 million. Williams is recovering from a torn ACL last September and was cut by the Chargers last week. The Dodgers beat the Padres 5-2 in South Korea to open up the new baseball season. Two hits and an RBI for Shohei Otani in his Dodgers debut. ESPN's Jessica Mendoza says the Braves are probably the biggest threat to the Dodgers in the National League. Are you kidding me in that lineup? Um, and then, of course, Chris Sale to be able to add to that rotation. So the Atlanta Braves, they led all of baseball in every single offensive category. They're one of the best pitching teams. That team is super exciting, and no one's talking about it, which is exactly where they want to be. Jess Mendoza on Greeny. Aaron Judge, after missing nine days, will play for the Yankees tonight against the Pirates. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Candy. Coming up Thursday, if you haven't filled out your bracket, what are you waiting for? Time is running out, so don't be like me. Get it done. It's on Sportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR presented by Pluckers. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neal. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. You And Mr. Toby Tomplin. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there, make it a good one. Kim Mulkey in 15 minutes from right now. Wilson Alexander, bottom of this hour. He was out at LSU practice earlier today. He'll uh, tell us what he saw. Of course, we're brought to you by Pluckers, and Pluckers rolled out the Breggy's Creole Crush, their collaboration with Alex Bregman, his new wing sauce. So you get by either Pluckers location. Try that Breggy's Creole Crush exclusively at Pluckers. Uh, LSU baseball had a uh, look, look, they got punked over the weekend. Man. Really disappointing series loss at Mississippi State, not just losing the series, but the manner in which you lost it. Uh, you had a tough opponent last night. Louisiana Tech's one of those veteran teams in college baseball. All but one of their starters are seniors or super uh, super seniors. And LSU went out there and wasted no time. Five runs in the bottom of the first. They run rule Louisiana Tech 11-1, to except for some command issues from Javen Coleman with three walks, Aiden Moffitt with a couple of walks. For the most part, your pitching staff performed well, and your offense really got going. A couple of moonshot homers from Jared Jones and Hayden Travinsky. Tommy White um, muscled one out as well. Uh, he's hit, he's homered down four consecutive games. This was a really nice way to bounce back for LSU. And look, a lot of people, you know, out in that weekend, you know, my point was, if you're talking about the offense, you're missing it because your your pitching is what let you down last weekend, giving up 33 runs for a staff that was supposed to pace your team. But Jay Johnson, after the game, liked what he saw from his offense and the way that that they bounced back against Louisiana Tech. It was a good game. You know, I, I really, I think I, we said this the other day. I feel like we made some improvements. I think they showed up immediately in the game Saturday. I thought we battled a really good pitcher on Sunday and then carried it over to tonight. And it's hard to hit, but I feel I feel pretty good about where we're headed there. One, um, again, offensively, everything, look, they went out and put up a five spot in the bottom of the first. Javen Coleman got out of some trouble with a double play in the first inning. But um, the... Um, in the bottom of the first, White came through and got a hit. Jones drew a walk. Uh, Travinsky had an RBI single. Um, Pearson had Pearson single in his first two at bats. The second one, in the second inning, was just a, a missile back back up the middle. Really nice AB by Braswell. Uh, a, a two RBI single. They just 
they got rolling in the first and never let up, which was which is what you wanted to see. You wanted to see them not be tentative, to bounce back and to play well and to be aggressive. They did. Five runs in the first, two in the second, a run in the third, a run in the fourth, a run in the sixth, and Tommy White walked it off uh, with an RBI in the eighth. So um, LSU wins 11-1, 11 runs on 12 hits. The three errors, yes, you could look at the three errors and be concerned by that. I wouldn't blame you, but they were all on the infield. Uh, one of them was by your pitcher, was Javen Coleman. So um, I liked a, I liked a lot of what of what we saw. Mostly, I'll tell you what I liked was the lineup, and it's what we talked about yesterday. If you were here on the show, they posted the lineup before we went off air, and I went through it. And my contention is, if LSU had one game to win today, that you had to go win today to win the national championship, what does your lineup look like? And for me, it's the lineup they went with last night. It's your best defensive lineup, and you get your best bats in there as well. Malazzo catching, who was your best defensive catcher, that's not debatable. You know Bear Jones at first, Tommy White at third, your middle infield with Braswell and Milam, and in the outfield left to right, you went Bingham, Kling in center, which we've talked about, and then Pearson in right. Pearson came through with a couple of hits early. It was very nice to see Kling, who I think hadn't had a hit in seven games, was the number, it was seven games since Kling had had a hit. He broke through last night. He had a walk, got a base hit, uh, got a double, which was nice to see him break through. And and the double, by the way, was down the left field line. And one of the things I've told you about about Kling is it's it's very obvious that he is trying to dead pull everything to left field because he's trying to hit homers. And as soon as he's a little more patient and you see the ball start to go back up the middle into right field, that's when you're going to know Kling is really has settled in and gotten comfortable at the plate. But that'll come. I'll maintain. I don't care if Paxton Kling hits 086. He's going to be in the lineup every day because he's your best center fielder. He's like having two He's like having two outfielders in one position. He's your best defensive outfielder. He It's at a premium position. He's an elite glove, and he needs to be in the lineup every day. Bury him in the eight or the nine hole, I don't care. But he's got to be in the lineup every day. And you saw you saw the results. Now, it's fair to mention that, you know, with the exception of, um, of Neal, you know that was the lineup that you went with in Game One against Mississippi State, and that lineup got handcuffed by by a freshman. And tip your cap to Stevens, the freshman from Mississippi State, who last Friday was awesome. I think that was more about that lefty being awesome than it was about LSU struggling. I, I think he was just on. And some days, some days pitchers are awesome. You tip your cap and you try again the next day, which LSU did, and they came out a house of fire in Game Two and got the win. But that kind of win against a good veteran Louisiana Tech team can be invigorating because it's going to remind you, yeah, you're a good baseball team. You're a talented baseball team. Go play how you know you, know you can. And the flip side of it is this weekend, yes, Florida's very good, and they're, but they're coming to the box this weekend. And you know, Luch told us yesterday his biggest takeaway from the college baseball weekend, Luch told us this on Monday, David DeLucci, his, his single biggest takeaway from the SEC weekend was that every – home team won their series this past weekend. It's just an illustration, bold underscore italics, how hard it is to go on the road and win a series. And LSU struggled, but so did everybody else on the road. Well, now you get a series at home against a good Florida team. Let's see if you can flip it. One other note that I would tell you uh, that I was encouraged by um, was seeing Cam Johnson come into the ball game and not just come into the ball game, but to pitch effectively. Um, he came in with two outs, in the is it the sixth, I'm looking. I'm trying to look at the box. I don't know if you do it offhand, Muse. But um, Cam Johnson came into the game. My apologies, y'all. I was trying to look for it right here. I think it was the seventh. I'm pretty sure it was the seventh inning, or maybe he was lifted in the seventh. I don't know it off the top of my head. Forget I said anything. He came in in the sixth, and he he came in for Rioa in the sixth. He got the strikeout with two outs and started the seventh inning, but. The thing that so he, Uyoa w- was in the game in the sixth. There's two outs and a runner on, and Johnson comes in and he gets a strikeout. And he and it was with ease, by the way. Uh, it was a it was a one two caught looking. Um, and the most impressive thing was his fastball location because that's where he had struggled. And some of the conversations I've had about Cam Johnson is that 
when he was at IMG, and remember, Cam, for those who don't, aren't familiar, I, I'm taking for granted that you just know this. Cam Johnson is the, the freshman lefty, 6'5", 240, you know, throws mid-upper 90s from the left side, the highest rate prospect ever to show up on LSU's campus. And the first couple of outings he had this year were not good. Uh, he, had a ma he had major issues with walks and command. And some of the conversations were like, look, when he was pitching at IMG, he was pitching in front of 50 people. All of a sudden, you stand on that mound, there's 10,000 people, it looks different. And the moment was too big for him. I think part of what we saw yesterday is Cam Johnson starting to settle in. And that was really encouraging to see. Let him taste success and don't let him try to fight through struggles because he's going to be a key part of what you do as this season goes along and he's going to be in your rotation next year. So let him let him find his comfort level and his success and rip it. And the, 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 the strikeout pitch was amazing with left to right movement. We've talked about his horizontal break. And you can just see the stuff, the stuff that had scouts you know, willing to offer him $3 million out of high school. But got one more and wanted the college experience and had his number and stuck to it. So in any event, it was great to see Cam Johnson have another little sliver of success. Just file that away because the more good days he can stack, the more opportunities he's going to get. And he's going to be a big part of this team when you get to the postseason. Okay, um, it's after further review. We're glad you're with us. We're brought to you by First South Farm Credit, firstsouthland.com, firstsouthland.com. I've been telling you, if, you buy, if you're looking to buy land, First South Farm Credit. That's what First South Farm Credit has done for more than 100 years. They help Louisianians buy land. For agriculture, if you're a farmer, they can even help you finance your, your, your farm equipment. If you want that recreational property, if you want the, the, the 20 acres in Zachary, the 20 acres in St. Francisville to build your family's dream home, your forever home. First South Farm Credit helps you buy land. They also have a patronage refund because they're a member-owned cooperative. They share in their profits with their members. You, so if you, if you loan money from First South Farm Credit every year, you will get a check in the mail from First South Farm Credit when they have their, their distribution. It's First South Farm Credit. Learn more at firstsouthland.com. That's firstsouthland.com. Okay, y'all, Wilson Alexander, bottom of the hour. LSU football is back on the practice field today. We'll see how it went. Wilson will join us. Uh, when we come back, um, LSU women's basketball coach, four-time national champ, Kim Mulkey, is going to rejoin the show here a couple days in advance of her team getting back on the, on the floor, uh, start their NCAA tournament bid. Stay here. It's AFR. AFR. I love telling you about Action Industries. Action Industries has served the petrochemical and refinery markets in Louisiana since 1982. And I throw that out there, and I say the year and all, because – it's one of those things where in the industry, people know who they are. But even though they've been around for more than four decades, a lot of you may not know that name, Action Industries. They're a proud partner of LSU Athletics. they got two locations uh, in Belrose and in Geismar on Highway 30 in Geismar. And something you may not know is that Action Industries does offer fabrication stop, uh, shop services. So if you need pipe, structural uh, steel, pressure vessels, which not everybody does, Action Industries can help. When they do their fight, pab, uh, fight, uh, pipe fabrication, they do that in separate shops, alloy and carbon steel. The two sections are segregated. You know how important that is. They're ASME certified, and they issue all three stamps, R, S, and U. It's Action Industries. Learn more online over at Action Industries. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Elevate brand visibility, ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, 
Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Flucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Flucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Two days away from the defending champs getting back on the floor, barking on a a potential title defense. Kim Mulkey, good enough to join us for a couple of minutes here. Coach, it's always our pleasure. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, bud? I'm awesome. We appreciate the time. Um, can we just start just with uh, just a few like box checking things? This week, I would imagine you know, coming off the SC tournament, having some time off was had to be so good for your team. What was the schedule like this week? Well, we took the first two or three days off, um, and that's for a lot of reasons. One, mentally and physically, we had to regroup. We had course poet situation and uh, Angel's ankle, and then uh, Williams. You know, she's doing good but you know the more rest the better and uh, then we started back um, on Thursday and uh, just getting after it and then um, you know after this past what weekend we get into this week and so we start working on different teams now that we know the schedule after the selection show Sunday. Um, could you give us just a, an, an injury update on uh, the three players that you just mentioned there with Angel, Michaela and uh, and with, with last year? Yeah, um, Polo was uh, in practice uh, this morning, and uh, we didn't go long. We did a lot of shooting drills. We went real early this morning at 6.30, and she was cleared to go and participated. Uh, Michaela's been cleared uh, since the conference tournament, that that championship game. I could only play her so many minutes, but she's been cleared to practice. And then Angel's ankle, of course, with any sprained ankle, you get better along the way, and she's She's doing good. So we've got everybody in practice and uh, just working on who we think we'll see next and what we have to do to, to be successful and win the next ball game. Coach, how difficult was it for Angel? To, I mean, she's bef- before the game, she's getting off the bus in a boot. She takes off the boot and goes and plays. I mean, it's incredible resilience. But can you speak to just, just how tough or how limited she was? You know, I asked the trainer. There's different degrees of ankle sprains. You've got the high ankle sprain and – that's probably the worst. She doesn't have any of that. There's different, okay. um, you know, pain tolerance. Angel was fine. It wasn't like she was playing in unbearable pain. Obviously, when you sprain an ankle, it can be mild and still hurt you. But uh, being in the boot was just, I think that's just what they do now. You yeah. know, instead of using crutches to keep you off of it and keep it from swelling. But, um, you know, she's. it wasn't like she, 
you know, couldn't play. It wasn't like it was that kind of degree of, of sprain, but just, you know, typical angel, just a tweak <laughs> enough to just irritate you. <laughs> Kim Mulkey's with us. I remember uh, when Terrio was in here with us on one Friday before the season, we talked to you and you told us, you know, guys, we're not going to have any trouble scoring the ball, but I got to find out who my point guard's going to be. And, um, you know, I've heard you talk about the job that Haley has done this year, uh, changing positions and how, how you wish you had more time with her to, to continue to teach her the spot. But I, when you look back now in hindsight from when she started that transition to how, where she is now, how would you sort of quantify the, the progress that she's made at that position this year? Well, I, I think Haley, like a lot of players, probably has played point guard in high school, but that's, this isn't high school anymore. You've got to define um, your, your position and, and your skill set at that position and to ask her to help us at the point guard was uh, very unselfish of her to do, but also... Uh, she understood it, it would make us a better team. Now, what has helped Haley is last year, Poa. Uh, when Poa is at her best, uh, she needs to be at the point, and then you can move Haley to her, her natural position, which is the off guard, and it allows her to shoot it and not have to think and not have to handle the ball. And, you know, that point guard position is, is brutal. It's, it's like a quarterback. You've got to make split second decisions. You have to, um, you know, know everybody's position on the floor, where they're supposed to be, and you don't have to do that at other positions. So <laughs> if Poa can continue to play like she has been, it will help Haley not have to play the point by herself. You know, I saw whenever uh, the selection show popped up, everyone had Haley Van Litt's reaction when you <laughs> saw that the Louisville was, was coming to Baton Rouge <laughs> as well. Um, I, I know you're not looking ahead to it at all, but – what just what is your reaction if we do end up getting that match up? You know, you were sitting right next to Haley when all that popped up on the screen. Well, obvious for obvious reasons, it would have been like if Maryland had popped up there or Baylor had popped up there. There are a lot of us, or DePaul, or sure. you can take any that any of us were at previously, and we'd all just laugh and and about the matchup. Haley is a competitor. Haley knows her strengths and weaknesses, and. He will have somewhat of an advantage and probably knowing more about Louisville in a scouting report than other teams. But, um, you know, Haley just wants to win. And uh, we will help her when, when and if that situation occurs where we play each other. And, um, you know, sometimes it, it's more pressure on you. Sometimes it, it brings out the best in you. Who knows? But what I do is uh, just try to make sure Haley is prepared. And I know she will work and be prepared for whatever happens. Well, before you ever get to a, to a potential match of a Louisville, you got to beat Rice. Um, can you give us the thumbnail scouting report on the Owls? I can. Uh, first of all, I'm very proud to say that two of my former managers are assistant coaches for Rice. Uh, I didn't say players. I said managers. So <laughs> right. that just tells you how old I'm getting. <laughs> uh, and also Middle Tennessee, who will be here, one of my former uh, All-Americans at uh, Baylor, is one of their assistant coaches. So... Uh, it's going to kind of be a reunion of sorts, and we're going to kind of all be competing against each other, but I'm very proud of those people. Um, Rice uh, had to win the, the conference tournament to get in the NCAA tournament. Uh, they did, and uh, you're going to see a, a very well-coached team. Uh, you're going to see uh, man-to-man. I say you're going to see it. Obviously, in the playoffs, they can change, but they're probably 85% man-to-man. You'll see an occasional 1-3-1 thrown at you with trapping on the baseline. Um, you're going to see young people that are excited because they're in the NCAA tournament and nobody probably predicted them to win their conference tournament. Kim Mulkey for a couple more minutes. Um, you know, I, I, when I look at your, your career, and I know you're going to say it's, it's not about you, but ever since you've been a coach, you, you've never missed the tournament uh, from the first time you made it at Baylor. And ever since that first year, you've always advanced past the first round. We know you've won this thing four times, and you're a Hall of Famer, and everybody knows that. Um, why are you so good in this tournament? Well, I think I probably have been beaten in the first round. I'd have to think back. Maybe that first year at Baylor, we lost to Arkansas in Cameron Indoor Stadium. But, man, we were sure excited to take a program that had only won seven games the previous year to – 
you know, the biggest turnaround at that time in the history of basketball. And then to think I did it here as well, that's just proud moments. That's kids buying into your, your beliefs and, and what you, you, you're trying to do. And, um, um, when I look back on my career, there are going to be so many things that, that I think of that really don't have national championship written by it. It's just going to be those first teams. It's going to be that team at LSU that stayed here and waited for me to come and, and coach them. And there's just a lot of things that um, the normal person or the normal fan or the normal uh, media person uh, doesn't really think about that mean the most to coaches. And um uh, I've been doing it a while, and um, I always tell people don't take it for granted and uh, enjoy it. It may not last forever, but um, we're going to fight hard, and it's the same way with this team. We're going to fight hard, and I firmly believe um, if somebody beats us, they're going to have to play their best basketball, and they're going to have to be tough because we're going to bring it. Yeah, Mulkey, Coach, I know my buddy Michael Anderson got you those custom Nikes with uh, part of the basketball from the championship game and part of the net as well. You uh, you rock those things yet? I will never put those on my body because they're <laughs> too special. Okay. Those will sit in my office. and They sit atop the national championship balls. And I have one facing forward and one back because he put some really special words on one on the back of them that says this is what I came home to do and that was win a national championship that means a lot to me and then of course you also want to display it with a uh, championship net that he intertwined uh within the shoelaces but also he took one of the balls from the final four and he cut it up and made this the swoosh emblem or whatever it was and so that young man is very talented and um I, I he would caught me off guard I was in the conference room and I think my assistant knew he was coming, and he introduced himself, and it was just one of those moments where, wow. I just want to know how he got that ball. Who gave him the ball to cut it up? (laughs) Well, my guess is that with 10 assistants, somebody got a championship ball, and um, I don't know how many they give us, honestly. After you finish the Final Four, I'm sure a certain number of championship balls are sent to you, um, and he probably – told one of the assistants what he was going to do, and they gave it to him. But I don't know. I'm just assuming that. Well, uh, it it turned out awesome. Great keepsake you'll have forever, and uh, hopefully there's many more to come. Kim Mulkey, uh, Coach, good luck on Friday and throughout this tournament. We'll be watching. Thank you, buddy. That's our pleasure. That is uh, Kim Mulkey, always generous with her time. Again, uh, the Lady Tigers, I shouldn't say the the Tigers, old habits die hard, The, uh, the women's basketball team. They'll play against Rice on uh, on Friday. We always appreciate when uh, when Coach Mulkey jumps aboard with us for a couple of minutes. It's after further review. We're brought to you by our friends over at Hudco Roofing. Of course, you need a roof repair replacement. Give us a shout. 364-1007. 364-1007. A lot of rain in the area this past weekend. If you were affected by it, commercial or residential, we can help. I mention all the time when you call that number in the 225-364-1007. It rings through not only to our office, Christina will probably answer in the office, but if it doesn't ring, or if you don't get the office, it'll ring forward to four or five people's cell phone number. So you're more than likely going to talk to a human on our staff. So give us a shout. We'd love to help you out. 364-1007. If you got roof repair, roof replacement, we can work with your insurance company. Make sure you get that whole thing replaced. 364-1007. Give us a shout. I would love to help you out. Um, when I got a break, Wilson Alexander joined us next. The LSU uh, football team is back on the practice field today. And um, uh, we'll get a practice report from Wilson. Uh, players met uh, with the media. Uh, Garrett Nussmeyer met with reporters earlier today. So um, we'll let you hear what he had to say as well. So we look forward to having Wilson join us. And Mama Scone in about 30 minutes from right now. Looking forward to having Mama Scone back here for her, uh, her bracket picks. We'll get to it. Stay with us here. It's AFR. AFR. All right, I got great news. Our friends over at the Watermark Hotel are giving away a pair of tickets to a wine pairing dinner tomorrow at the Gregory. If you want to win them, all you got to do is text me that you want them. Three six, uh, no, 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 two two five. Um, why I just threw out the wrong number? I got so many numbers going around. My, what's my text line? Three nine six forty four hundred. That's it. Three nine six forty four hundred. Three nine six forty four hundred. This is a wine pairing dinner. It's one hundred fifty dollars a person plus tax and gratuity and all that sort of stuff. But this is free. A pair of tickets for free. You want a date night? It's the Stag's Leap Wine Pairing Dinner at the Gregory at the Watermark Hotel tomorrow night. 
And our friends over at the Gregory are giving our audience a pair of tickets to give away. So I'll give it away on the text line at random. Just text me. Let me know you want them. We'll pick a winner. Again, 396-4400, 225-396-4400. It's going out tomorrow night, downtown Baton Rouge, at the Watermark Hotel inside the Gregory. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart... After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Flucker's Wing Bar, open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Flucker's Wing Bar, if you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. It's, it's obviously, you know, we, we lost a lot of talent, um, but, you know, I think we've done a, a very good job as an offense and, and, you know, developing our identity and, you know, finding ways to make up uh, for those losses. And um, I think guys have stepped up, and that was the biggest thing. Um, you know, guys have stepped up in, in their different positions, and, uh, you know, I think things have gone really well so far. Garrett Nussmeyer met with reporters after practice on Wednesday. Our buddy Wilson Alexander from The Advocate was there. He's good enough to join us now. How are you, man? Good, Matt. How are you doing? Doing really well. Anything in particular that uh, Garrett said today that stood out? Nothing, I guess, specific and uh, per se. I think more so sort of the mentality that he's going into this off season with and as the starter for the first time. Garrett, it was interesting hearing him. He, as he, I think, he would want to hear from someone in his position. Really, was not t talking about himself. He kept saying, "You know, this isn't about me being the starter. This is about us as an offense." you know, doing what we need to do in order to uh, become cohesive and, uh, it, you know, it wor you know, have the offense work this fall. Mason Taylor told a story about right after the bowl game, 
uh, uh, Eric Nussmeyer started getting everybody on the offense together, uh, whether it was watching film or throwing sessions three times a week uh, throughout the month of January with the skill players um, to really assume that role. But um, to hear Garrett say it was kind of interesting. He's like, you know, it wasn't being intentional trying to take control of the role. Uh, in his mind, that's just kind of what you do during the off season. That's what he grew up doing as a starter. And now as he's the starter again, he's trying to make sure he takes control of this team in a way that isn't about him still, but is about really making this offense hum again in 2024. Anything with Garrett or the quarterback stand out in the, the limited viewing period for the media on Wednesday? No, they were only doing individual drills, you know, kind of going over bags and throwing that way. I guess what stood out was just that A.J. Swan uh, continues to be the second-team quarterback uh, over Ricky Collins, uh, but, you know, that Ricky's uh, looks like mechanically maybe a little bit smoother than he did at times as a freshman. And Colin Hurley also physically uh, doesn't quite look like somebody who only just turned 17 a couple days ago and never played his senior year of high school football. Garrett Nussmeyer gave him some, um, you know, sort of teased him a little bit the other day, uh, saying that he had just turned 13, and congratulations on that. But um, <laughs> Colin is a little bit older than that, but he, uh, even though he is not as old as some of the other freshmen in this class, um, he physically looks uh, pretty close to the other quarterbacks in the room. Have you just, I, I get, I know it's limited viewing, and when the media is indoors, you're up in the catwalk, and so it's hard to see a lot of stuff, but does anything physically stand out? about Colin Hurley, the, the true freshman early enrollee? Yeah, I mean, I think he's just, you know, it looks like he's you know spent time uh, throughout his high school career, you know, kind of just in the weight room. You know, he's, he's not like wiry and thin or anything like that. He's built. He's got what uh, looks like, you know, he uses his legs pretty well through his throwing motion. He's got a nice, quick, pretty smooth release. Um, you know, we haven't seen him try to get out on the field in 11-on-11 or anything like that. This is, again, just extremely limited uh viewing set period we've got two 20 minute periods so far this spring maybe we'll get a little bit of a better view on saturday that's supposed to be a fully open practice to the media and so if he takes reps during the full team periods we'll be get a better sense of you know how he reads the field um and sees defenses at this you know very early stage in his career because that's probably the thing that would stand out the most is that you know colin seems to have a good bit of arm talent but how is he able to process and how quickly can he do that against an uh you know an sec defense Wilson Alexander is our guest. Uh, obviously, there's a giant question about the wide receiver pecking order and replacing Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas. I, I think we all assume Kyron Lacey's there at the top. Is it is it sort of playing out that way, and has anyone else caught your eye? So far, Kyron Lacey does appear to be at the top. Garrett said that the social media clips that LSU sh has shared of Kyron so far is pretty representative of what he's done this spring and really sort of trying to establish himself as that. Uh, wide receiver one but this is a receiver room that uh, has a lot of competition going on a couple other guys that have stood out is chris hilton you know we've seen uh his speed of course over the years but not necessarily what he can do as a complete receiver uh and now that he, you know he's got a chance here to really start uh for the first time in his career it seems like he is trying to take advantage of that he's been with the first team offense both of those open viewing periods um and then you know richard freshman kyle parker ran with the first team offense today as mm. well uh, you know, that's somebody who only played in four games last year. Um, but he is, um, you know, I guess put himself in a position to try to be part of that rotation. Um, cause Aaron Anderson, CJ Daniels and Xavier Thomas were all on the second team. And I'm sure that they'll get their shot at that time, especially once they're going into full team periods. Uh, you know, when the media leaves or maybe when we're able to see on Saturday uh, or even in the spring game, uh, they're probably, you know, giving those guys reps as well, but those would probably be your top six at this point. Okay. I want to flip it over to, to defense. I think as much of an interest in the players is the coaches. So this is the first time for, for the media to get to watch these new coaches interact with the players. Who is uh, who has stood out for whatever reason? Well, you can hear Bo Davis, that's for sure, <laughs> um, and with some particularly colorful language um, that kind of carries. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, things that we necessarily can't say on the air. Um, so Bo Davis stands Thank out you for, for that. that reason. You're welcome. Um, and really, you know, Blake Baker is uh, back in his cleats. Um, if anybody remembers him from 2021, you know, he was, uh, would wear cleats out on the practice field, and he does that still um, as he's working with the linebackers. Um, and, you know, Greg said that he's done it, that Blake Baker's done a pretty good job so far of just kind of uh, articulating things to these guys and helping them understand what they're supposed to do and getting them to play fast and so that they don't have to react. And it's early. They're still, you know, just now really – starting to install the defense 
Um, but that's a good sign to hear kind of early on. And then, of course, Corey Raymond being back as well. You know, it's uh, it, the who was it was Greg Penn, who was a freshman here in 2021 when Corey Raymond was still here. Said it was nice to kind of hear his voice out on the practice field again. Um, the one glimpse we've got in terms of just technique work is Corey's been, you know, specifically with the corners, um, even though he's technically the, uh, the secondary coach. Um, and he was working with them, I guess, when practice first opened a couple of weeks ago on some press man techniques, which would be, I think, a welcome sight to a lot of LC fans. Yeah. Is there, uh, no doubt, is there any uh, discernible pecking order yet at, at cornerback? I know Jared Brown, the Ohio State transfer, is out there this spring. So any, anything that you've been able to, to ascertain there with the corners? It seems like just right here at the beginning that Ashton Stamps and JV and Toviano are the first team corners. Um, which makes sense, especially at the early part of the spring. Uh, what we've seen under Brian Kelly so far is usually if you're a returning player, you're kind of at the front of the pecking order. Uh, J.K. Johnson looked like he was kind of running slow, maybe dealing with something a little bit today. But, you know, he's in the mix certainly as well. So it seems like it's probably, you know, Samson Toviano at the top because Sage Ryan is, you know, over with the safeties or maybe playing kind of that nickel spot. And then you're talking about, you know, J.K. Johnson and Jair Brown and uh, you know P.J. Woodland and some of the others there at corner. Um, but that seems to be the pecking order at the moment, but of course that's subject to change. Yeah, Saturday will be a big day with uh, a lot of media availability at Saturday's practice, and we're counting down days to the spring game as well where everyone's going to get a little extended look at uh, at some of these these guys. Uh, Wilson Alexander over at The Advocate. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at WHAlexander underscore. Always appreciate it, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great rest of the day. You do the very same, Wilson Alexander. We're brought to you by the Williamson Eye Center. You can always call 924-2020. Set up that free consultation. Tell you every day. Don't live your life with contacts and glasses, man. Last uh, week, of course, I was in New York. When I went to fly, so easy to pack. I didn't have to worry about extra pair of contact lens, my contact case, my travel solution, the, my glasses. So whenever I take my contacts out at night, I have my, my, my glasses on. Do you worry about when you travel? Man, what if I rip a contact lens? What if one pops out? Never have to worry about it again, ever. We'll never have to worry about that again. I just took that entire drawer in my bathroom and just dumped it in the trash. It, it took a while, actually. It took probably several months to finally realize, like, why am I holding on to this stuff? And I just threw it all away. It is so liberating to just wake up in the morning and see every day. Give yourself that gift. Call Dr. Blake Williamson at the Williamson Eye Center. 924-2020. 924-2020 or williamsoneye.com. All right, y'all. Um, we're a little more than halfway home here on the show. Mama Scone in 18 minutes. Mama Scone sent me her bracket. Uh, oh, Mama Scone. I'll tell you this. Um, Mama Scone was upset with me earlier today. Why's that? Well, I called her at about 2 o'clock, mm -hmm. and I said, all right, Mom, you know what today is? She's like, Wednesday. I said, it's Mama Scone Day. It's bracket day. She's like, you have to tell me. You have to give me a heads up. I said, Ma, it's better this way. Like, you ain't, you're not going to do any research anyway. You're just going to pick what team has the prettiest name or is, you know, is, looks like a Catholic team or something like that. I mean, that's what she's going to do. Do you recognize somebody's name? That's all it's going to be. So uh, she was taking uh, Gramps to the doctor. And she, I said, well, I guess I can work on it when I'm there. Work on it, Mama. It's going to take you three seconds. Just click, click, but is she and she won last year. Last year she won. Yes. Huh, last year was the crazy year where it was FAU, Miami, St. Peter's, U UConn, and no Final Four, and uh, Houston was your Final Four. It, like it was so. Yep, yeah, St. Peter's. Like it was just a. And didn't she have St. Peter's? Uh, yeah, she did. She had them advancing like far, and they went to the Elite Eight. If there's there. a, I'm telling you, there's a Catholic school. There's a saint in there. She's picking them. They have the favor of God. I'm telling you. Hey, man, Sister Jean. Well, they're not a saint. Who are they? No, that was that was holy. Loyola, Chicago. Loyola, Loyola. Of course, Loyola. Yeah, because my dad went to Loyola. I'm like, Mama, that's Loyola, it's New Orleans. Different, totally different, different school. Different. Not even the same thing. Um, let's see who she's got in her final four. Who? <laughs> I had not even looked at her bracket until right now. Who do you think she has winning the national championship? Uh, St. Mary's. Give, give yourself a ding. Yes. I had not even looked. Hey I, say, I told you, if it's Catholic, she's picking it. It's a good omen for Pluckers trivia later. That is. 
Oh man, that's so good. Uh, all right, it's uh. <laughs> I swear to God, I hadn't that's, looked. I that's beautiful. Swear, that really is hand beautiful. Hand on the Bible, swear to God, I hadn't looked. And she's got St. Mary's with the natty. I'll tell you, if it's, a, if it's a Catholic, she's picking you. All right, it's after further review. Uh, we'll do Tigers and the Pros next. AFR. AFR is brought to you by Glow Resources, G-L-O, glowresources.com. Glow Resources, yes, offices. They're, they're corporate headquarters here in Baton Rouge. And if you ever get a shot... Go see my buddy Jareth Knockhand. Go see the headquarters on Perkins Road right next to Pennington. If you're driving down Perkins, it's at it's at Quail Oak. It they have they did a gut renovation of that building and it is phenomenal. They will remake that part of Perkins Road. But they service companies all over the country and place employees and jobs all over the world. If you need skilled blue collar labor, check. But what they really want to promote as well is their white collar division. If you need to hire managers. Glow Resources can help, and they guarantee their work, y'all. They stand by their work, and they guarantee it. If their employee doesn't work out within 60 days, they will give you a prorated refund or find you a new employee for free, but they have a 93% retention rate. GLO, glowresources.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family sized water park, miles and miles of trails and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we... After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. 
All right, wrapping up hour number two, Mama Scone in 12 minutes. Right now, Muso has Tigers in the Pros. Tigers in the Pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. All right, we lead with a big spring training, J. Big spring training day for Josh Smith of the Texas Rangers. That game currently in progress, but Smith is sitting on a two-for-three day with his fifth double and an RBI. He's also drawn a walk. So in uh, four plate appearances, it looks like he has um, reached base three times. Really good spring, man. Hitting 300 so far. I think think, think he's going to have a spot there once again uh, up in Arlington. Wouldn't surprise many people. Is there any doubt? No, probably not. Now that I think about it, probably not. Jake Fraley's on the other side of him there I'm today. No. no. No, no, no. See, he's from Delaware. Oh. Not not Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh. Yeah. Uh, 0 for 1, but does have a walk so far on Got the it. day. It's a slow day there for the Cincinnati Reds. They're getting destroyed uh, by the Texas Rangers. Cam Thomas did his uh, dead level best last I'm night. High. No. I actually don't remember where he's from, but I know he didn't go to Catholic High. Who are we talking about? Cam Thomas. Oh, Cam Thomas. Is he from Florida? No. No? Um, I was going to say New Jersey, but that's Nas Reed. in the Northeast. Was it Northeast? Maybe it wasn't okay. um, uh, He was born in Japan. That's cool. Uh, I don't know, I remember And he that. went to Oak Hill Academy in Virginia. Ah, Northeast. Yeah, you're right there. Uh, Although... If you're in New York, they consider Virginia the South. Yeah, well, I mean, technically, Virginia is they're below the Mason-Dixon line, but, I mean, they're right there on the border. So, I mean, you know, Virginia is the North. Um, 34 minutes for Cam last night, 25 points. Uh, of course, the Pels got the victory over the Nets, but how about this? So, you remember Cam Thomas missed a few, uh, missed a little bit of time with his injury. He's now played in six games since returning. He's averaging 26.5 points, five boards, and three assists. He, I mean, he... He picked up right where he left off right before said injury. So, really good to see uh, there from Cam Thomas. Uh, Trenton Watford got into the game for five minutes, but only recorded a rebound. Mm. And then, uh, lastly, Nas Reed did miss the game last night for the Timberwolves. They're officially calling it a head injury. No real update other than that. His next opportunity to get back on the floor will be Friday. So, when uh, the uh, Wolves host the, uh, the Cavaliers, so we'll keep you updated there, but for now, Nas Reed out with that uh, head injury. You he know what that, that head injury, obviously. That's why he left. He's got head injury. He has head and wits about him. He stayed. No, no, I no. don't like that no. one. No, no. Actually, I thought no. you mean I thought you were uh, kind no. of alluding to the injury happened at LSU, and I'm like, no, no, no. This was the other night, but then, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he should have stayed. We know that's we know that to be fact. Yeah. Uh, that that is Tigers and the Pros. Presented by South Point Volkswagen, southpointvw.com. New and certified pre-owned in Baton Rouge and online at southpointvw.com. I want to remind you for the rest of this month, y'all, for the rest of this month, you can still get 0% APR for 60 months on Tiguan. That is the compact SUV if you want something that is affordable and stylish and safe. 0% APR for 60 months on Tiguan right now. At South Point Volkswagen, Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer. Go to the website, check them out online, shop online. If it's on the lot, it's online. And remember, they've got certified pre-owned as well. So if you're looking for other for used vehicles, if it's certified pre-owned, all different makes and models. So go to the website, hit the the uh, used car, the used tab at the top, and you'll see a list of all the vehicles they have there. At the website. Remember, if it's on the lot, it's online. So these aren't factory stock photos. These are the pictures of the actual vehicle with all of the specifications of that vehicle there at southpointvw.com. Southpointvw.com. It's South Point Volkswagen. What's your direction? Um, this is really cool. And yes, I'm completely biased and I yell Calakai all the time. And I know a lot of you hate that. I don't really care, but this was awesome. I saw this earlier today. So Perfect Game put out their uh their updated rankings of the top baseball high school baseball programs in the country and uh <clears throat> Calakai is number one in the country 
How about that? Oh, Muse, are you going to do it to me? Let's go! And try up on the field. Big Brewing cohorts are cheering for the Bears will never yield. Since they were all out for victory, no matter what the cause. Cause we'll fight forever till the last wide line is crossed. Although the fight song kind of is like a football fight song, you know what I mean? Till the last white line is crossed. Yeah, but I mean, it's still Catholic High's fight song. I know, I know, I know. For a while there, they did uh, have an alternate fight song that was like for basketball or something like, so you that's, score that's too the much. final goal yeah, that's, or something. That's too much. I was like, let's not do that. Uh, yeah. But anyway, how about that? Only school in Louisiana in the top 50, number one in the country. Congrats to Brad Bass and the gang over there uh, at Catholic High School. Doing great things. Tell you all the time, you ain't got to like Catholic High. But you better respect the fact that that is a program right down the street from LSU who I know you do love, and you better hope that pipeline continues right there from Hearthstone to Dalrymple. Hour number three is next. AFR. Speaking of purple and gold, relief windows. Of course, when you think windows and you think purple and gold, you think relief windows. Windows, doors, siding. Oh, yeah. We do indoor shutters now as well. It's relief windows and reliefwindows.com. Not just windows, but uh, hardy plank and vinyl siding. And beautiful replacement doors as well. Remember, if you put hardy plank or vinyl siding, have that installed on your home, that makes your home more energy efficient, makes it safer. It's fire resistant as well. Uh, all weather, you paint it once or you don't, you, I'm sorry, you never paint it. It comes finished in whatever color you want. You never have to paint it again. It's relief windows. They do all their incredible. And as I say all the time when it comes to relief windows, the thing that is the single biggest differentiator. Yes, they sell you a premium product, beautiful windows, doors, and siding, but their customer service is what sets relief windows apart and always has. They'll never take a dollar from you until they're done and you're thrilled with the work. It's relief windows. Ask any competitor. Do you even have a service department? You'll never have to worry about it with relief windows. Online, reliefwindows.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. 
Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I'm Doug Brown. The NFL's competition committee is proposing changes to kickoffs and an end to so-called hip drop tackling. The new rules would promote more kick returns but minimize the potential for injuries. Owners will vote on the possible changes at the annual meeting next week. On the first full day of spring today, the Major League Baseball season opened in Seoul, South Korea. Slice the first pitch, hits it into the left center field gap. That's a base hit. Here's Lux coming around third. He'll score standing. It is five to two as Shohei Otani comes up with his first run batted in as a Dodger. The call on AM 570 LA Sports. The Dodgers score four times in the eighth to beat the Padres five to two. Michigan State is in the NCAA tournament, but Coach Tom Izzo believes there should be former coaches and players on the selection committee. Right now, the committee consists of nine athletic directors and three conference commissioners. The first four continues tonight in Dayton, and the women's first four opens tonight on ESPNU. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. At Progressive, they're making things even easier. They'll help you bundle your home and car insurance together so you can save on both. Learn more at Progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us, AFR, presented by Pluckers. I'm Matt. You're a loser, Matt. Hey, shut up, kid. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. You sue. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there, make it a good one. Five o'clock, quitting time. Glad you're dri- driving home with us. Oh, by the way, it's a hump day. Hey, yep. It's hump day. Let's hump everybody. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Let's hump, comma, everybody. That's an important comma. Yes. That's a very important comma. Punctuation oh. matters. Very much. It's hump day. Kim Mulkey was here last hour. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? So was Wilson Alexander. Hump day. Bill Conley was here in hour number one. It's hump day. Noted ESPN stat nerd. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Self-described, by the way. It's in his Twitter profile. He owns it's hump day. It. We'll talk about Garrett Nussmeyer here in about 10 minutes. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? We got some Pluckers trivia. We got some Otter Locks. It's hump day. We got a lot to do, so let's get going. Uh, and we will start hour number three with what has become uh, an annual tradition here on this Wednesday before the madness begins when... Um, as has become customary, we welcome aboard to tangle in a bracket challenge the one and only, my mother, Darlene Francis Mumford Moscona, a.k.a. Mama Scone, for the bracket challenge. Mama Scone, how are you? I'm doing well, Matt. How Where did you? her music go? Wait, where did her music go, Muse? Where, what? That's more like it. 
Never mind, Muse. We, well, <sighs> yeah. We had we had a bit planned where uh, we had my mom coming home and he was gonna cue up. We are the champions because you beat me last year. I did beat you, but he, he just screwed it up. So that's okay. Uh, com- <laughs> comedic timing is everything. Uh, there's a weed joke to be made about Muse. Mom, can you believe Muse is such a pothead? Can you believe that? No, I don't believe it. Why don't you believe that? He is. Uh, well, smart woman. I don't know. That's why <laughs> she's she's intelligent. That's why Matt. That's why she doesn't believe that. Uh, because so we, I, don't, I never believe anything you say. Matt. Anything. Smart woman. Well, Are you trying to say I have no integrity? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm the good kid. You are a good kid. See. See that? Did I ever but give you? Any, lie. Did I ever give you any trouble? Uh, I don't remember. It was too long ago because you're old. No, I'm old. Mom, <laughs> why am I hearing myself? I keep hearing. You uh, have the echo. Because yeah. Muse didn't ask if you have an echo. All right, here's what we got to do: hang up and dial us right back. If you dial us back at this number, the echo will go away. Okay. Uh, All right, okay. hang up and call us right back. Okay. Uh, that's a double whammy, Muse. That's two strikes in one segment, Muse! Who do you have to say for yourself? I, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Look I at mean, Paul over there. Paul's just like, Paul. I, I don't I, <laughs> Paul, just, Paul has nothing to say but says everything through his expressiveness. Um, all right, so Mama Scone will call, will call back here. She had the echo on the phone. As I described yesterday, sometimes it happens. It's... Um, unpredictable and really weird, but sometimes people have an echo when we call them, and uh, Muse is supposed to check with everybody, and he did with Mama Scone. But anyway, we're back. Okay, we got her? Okay, all right, Mom. How? Uh, thank you again for joining us, as always. Um, I'm certain that you took uh, great pangs and stakes and lengths to, uh, to put together your bracket this year? Uh, yeah, because you... No, not really. Because you called me in the car when I was on the way with Gramps to the doctor's mm-hmm. office, and yeah. I... Didn't even know it was today. So you got to give me more notice because, you know, I do so much um, research and, you know. <laughs> well, Mom, that was kind of not. the point. Yeah, that, and she just dropped the not joke. How do you know you're, de- um, you're dealing with a septuagenarian? They still drop <laughs> not jokes. That's what we're dealing with here. Uh, well, I guess you're not a septuagenarian yet. You're a sextagenarian. You're 67, 66, 66. I'll be 67 in, in, in a, a few weeks. weeks. That's right. mm-hmm. April the 5th, she'll be 66. Okay. All okay. right, Mama. Um, yes. Let's get into your bracket here. Uh, yes, okay. and I told you, I called you today at like two o'clock and said, "Hey, it's bracket day," and you got mad at me because, <laughs> I, and I don't know why, because it's not like you actually take any time to do any research or need to know anything. You just got to push buttons on the screen, and it takes you thirty seconds. I know, but I was texting you because I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't log in. It was making me crazy, but mm. I did it. More I old people it. problems. I was, well, I was doing it on my phone in the doctor's office. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so, but I finally got it. Are you back? If home? I was on my laptop, I would have been better. Got it. Or you, not, maybe not your desktop with your dial-up modem. No, I have a laptop. Oh, okay. Look, you're old. I don't want desktop. My dial-up modem. No, so. I have a laptop. Okay, so let's run through it, Mom. Um, by the okay. way, yes. Um, bef- before the top of the hour, last hour, uh, one of the things that I, I said before I ever looked at your bracket, I was like, if it's a Catholic team, she's gonna pick them. Like, there's no doubt. Like, if it's Saint something, she's in. And so before I even looked at your bracket, I asked Muse, I said, hey, who do you think she picked to win the national championship? And you know what he said, Mom? What? What do you think he said? St. Mary's. St. Mary's! He nailed it! He he nailed it! It was so easy. If it's Saint something, if it's a Catholic school, you're picking them. It's a rule. I don't know that these are all Catholic schools. Mom, if it says send it something on it, it's a Catholic school. Well, I don't know that. Name a it non-Catholic a school denom- that's Saint something. Well, I don't. I don't know. I don't know every college in the in the United States. Well, you know, Saint Mary's is a Catholic school, and it, it and it had it had Mary in it as well. That was that was low hanging fruit right there for you, Mom. If it, <laughs> as Loyola was Sister Jean, if it's Saint Mary's or Notre Dame, you're in on them. There's no doubt about it. Well. You know, I always like to go for an underdog, too. Yeah, you do. So, which some of mine, you'll see, that are mm. underdogs. Are there are mm-hmm. fives. Now, look, I'm looking, Mom, in um, uh, I'm looking in this first region, and it doesn't look like you picked many upsets, actually. Um, no, I don't think I did. You have Drake beating Iowa State, which I don't even think that that's a real um, 
trendy pick. A lot of people have Drake, or, or I think that is kind of a trend. A lot of people have Drake there. What about, um, as we mentioned, St. Mary's going far. Mom, you really didn't pick many upsets here. Either that or you just, you know what, you just didn't send me your first round games. That's what it is. Part of your bracket is, what? part of your bracket that you sent me is cut off. I don't see your first round pick. <laughs> what? No. Well, okay. I don't know then. On the one I'm looking at, I, I'm sorry. All right. Who okay. was your biggest upset that you picked? Um, Let's see. In the first round? Yeah. Well, let's see. Drake over Iowa State. Yeah. Um, that's a 10 and a 2. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You have Sam. Yeah. You have Samford. They're a 13. Oh, you went with St. Peter's again, huh? The Peacocks? <laughs> oh, the Peacocks? Yeah. And didn't they, you picked them last year and they went to like I the did. Elite Eight? Oh, I don't remember. That's one that. of the reasons you beat me. St. Oh. Peter's was like a 15 that went to the Elite Eight. <laughs> and it was a really <sighs> screwy year last year. I mean, like FAU and Miami and a bunch of random small schools that nobody cares about made the Final Four, which is why you won. All the chalk lost. Um, oh. Like, can we go? Can we go over again, Mom? Um, why you? Uh, why you hate basketball? Because I don't like the squeaky shoes. She does not like squeaky shoes. Did you ever no, think about just watching? Crazy. Did you think about just watching the game on mute? N- no, I don't. Because I, I have better things to do with my time. Then I'm what? just not into. I just don't like basketball. It's not. You know, I like football and baseball better. Why? I don't know. I mean, football. I like well. I don't know, because I grew up with my dad watching football, I guess. And mm-hmm. um, and then when I married your dad, um, he liked baseball. He watched, well, I mean, he likes football too, but he watched, mm-hmm. the, he was a Yankees fan. And so he would watch baseball, and I got into watching baseball. And I do like to watch, I'd much rather go to a baseball game than a football game. Got it. Less, smaller crowd, little, little. Smaller crowd, more family oriented. Yeah. You don't have to go, you know, 10 hours ahead of the game to, you know, be able to park and stuff yeah. like that. That's true. You, know, you don't have fans chanting STTDB, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know what that is, don't you? No. Oh, you don't know what that is? I'll, well, I'll tell you later. I'll write it down because okay. I don't think I should say it. Um, okay. All right, well, you've got uh, BYU, St. Mary's, Kentucky, and Gonzaga as your final four. Any uh, reasons why? Well, because you know I like to say Gonzaga. You like I just to say like the Gonzaga, way it, yep. I like the way it sounds. I know um, – Hey, Kentucky? you know? Do you know who Gonzaga plays in the first round? Um, wait, hold on. Gonzaga plays TCU. No, in the first round. The first round. Oh, McNeese. They play McNeese, and you know who coaches McNeese, right? No. Will Wade coaches McNeese now, Mom. They were thirty and three this year. Wow. I know. How about that? Are you sticking with that Gonzaga? Was- well, I already picked him, so yeah. Okay. Sticking, sticking with Gonzaga. Sticking with the Zags there. All right, so going Gonzaga because you think it's fun to say. You got Kentucky <laughs> as well in the Final Four. Why would you like Kentucky? Well, Kentucky, I know just from hearing about sports on TV and stuff, they usually have a good basketball team. Yep, usually they do. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, and then in the other uh, side, you've got uh, BYU against St. Mary's. So you've got the Mormons against the Catholics. <laughs> this was This was very easy, right? <laughs> I mean, clearly this is what happened. You're like, oh, there's Mormons against Catholics. We're clearly going with the Catholic school. I did, I did not even think about that. You know what? That's even that's what? even sadder, Mom, because it's buried in your subconscious and your bias that you said, you know what? Yeah. To hell with those Mormons living out in Utah with their, with their low-rise buildings because they can't build skyscrapers up to the sky and their, uh-huh. their mountains and their, their blue uniforms and whatnot. Yeah, that's that's everything I've thought. I know you did. It's buried in your subconscious, BYU, and it's written all over your face. Round, BYU play Duke, and plays Duquesne? Or yep, Duquesne. <laughs> you nailed it. Is that how you say Can we it? give her a ding? Yep, she nailed it. Duquesne. You got it. Oh, jeez, that was loud. Yep. Um, uh, Mom, it's actually... I, I've never it's, heard uh, of them. It's, du- it's Duquesne is how you say oh. it. Duquesne, not Duquesne. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm, I've never heard of it. No, that's okay. So that, that's why I picked BYU. Because you've heard of them. Yes. And then you had BYU beating beating Drake. Beating Drake. Oh yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. Have you heard of Drake? He's a rapper. No. You never heard of him? Oh, I heard. Yes, I've heard that name. As yeah, rapper, that's his. Yeah. That's his school. It's Drake. The Drake the rapper. No, it's he started. Not. Yeah, he did. Drake the rapper started a school, and that's his college. Are you serious? 
serious? Yes. See, I never know when to believe you. Why would I lie about this? <laughs> all of my all, all of my credibility would go out the window if I'm lying about this. Yeah, that's not, that's not to... that's not Drake the rapper. He doesn't have a school. No, he's he's Canadian. That's not him at all. So, uh, and then you got BYU beating uh, beating uh, UConn there, mom. Yeah, BYU beating UConn. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. BYU beating UConn. Well, Why you like them? Well, well. Wait, we don't have you beating UConn. Oh, up to, yeah. Well, you see, that would be an upset, right? Number six beating number. Oh, one. that would be big. That's true. So that's why, you know, like, I don't want to always go with the highest seed, you know? I do know. Okay, Mom. Well, you know and what? that's how I've won in the past. That's how I've beat you in the past because I picked the one that, you know, sometimes would was not the obvious pick. I think you've beaten me once, and it was last year. Maybe twice ever. Um, no, I've beat you three times. No, Mom. Yes. I think you beat me twice. And I, I think the I think one last year, year was the third time. I think last year was the second time that you've ever beaten me. And the mm-hmm. time that you that you had Loyola going to the Final Four with Sister Jean, I don't even think you beat me that year. I think that was like the only thing you got right in your entire bracket was was, <laughs> was, was, was Loyola going to, the, which was incredible. Congratulations on that. Um, it's astonishing, but I I really think that was the only thing you got right in your bracket that year. Um. Yeah. Oh well, anyway. whatever. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Mom you know, Scone. I need the redemption. The losing. It's not the winning or losing. It's how you play the bracket, right? That doesn't make sense at all. All you're all you're literally doing is just is just filling out, <laughs> just punching buttons on a computer screen. Yeah. So. No, on my phone. Uh, well, I know you're not going to watch, so we'll uh, keep no, in touch with watch. you. I know you won't. We'll keep in touch with you to let you know how you're doing uh, throughout okay. the course of the tournament, and hopefully you're doing very poorly, so I can maintain some sh- uh, shred of dignity. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, that is uh, Mama Scone. Thank you, Mama Scone. We appreciate right, you. Great. Buddy. Okay. okay uh, love the one, you. I love you too. The, the one and only Mama Scone. There she is. One of the most requested uh, segments every year here on After Further Review when Mama Scone and I go head to head in the bracket challenge. Muse, do you have the bracket challenge uh, promo read over there that you could read? That would be you can keep the you can keep the Aussie going there if you'd like. Let's do it. Muse. Sure, I like Ozzy. It's good stuff. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you should register now. Make your picks now for the Million Dollar Bracket Challenge. Powered yep. by Acura of Baton Rouge and Coors Light. It's at 104.5 ESPN.com. How about this? First place wins $2,024 cash. Hey. And if your bracket's perfect, oh. you will win $1 million and a three-year lease on a 2024 Acura RDX. It's the Million Dollar Bracket Challenge, powered by Acura of Baton Rouge and Coors Light. You better get those. Uh, but you're going to fill out a bracket, play our challenge. Too. By the way, can't you win like a TV and other stuff as well? I did not say. <laughs> if you go to In one... years past, yes. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really say here. <laughs> well, he should be. It should be. There is. Isn't he a convicted felon? Uh, it doesn't really say here. Eh, well, he should be. Uh, I thought there was a TV in there, too. Maybe not. Maybe that's just what it's been in the past. Uh, usually there's like a 75. Yep. First place gets the um, the first pr- place is $2,024. Second place is a 75-inch TV with a sound bar. And third place is a two-night stay at the Beau Rivage. That's really good. Yeah, that is really good. That's really good. I'm the program director. I should know that stuff. Yeah. That's why I knew it. Are we all mandated to fill out brackets again this year? Of course. Oh, we got to get on that then. Yeah, if you don't, you're fired. That tournament like starts tomorrow. I like have not done storm. that. Yeah, let's get to it. It's AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Clegg's Nursery with four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area. You know where to find them. Segan near Airline, LA-16 in Denham, Mid-City on Don Moore, and the Garden Center on Greenwell Springs. Y'all, they got full greenhouses, and they have shipments arriving every single day. Uh, Miss Teresa every week sends me an email with um, – with the, the list of the shipments for that week and what their promotions are. And it is just like a big old long like Excel looking spreadsheet of all the stuff they're getting. So if you want flowers and plants and trees and shrubs or Johnny Naylor seeds or any of the, the trimmings and fixings and things that you need, the garden decor, wind chimes, they've got it for you at Clegg's Nursery. Y'all, it's springtime. It's time to get out in your lawn. It's time to just plant something. If you're going to be enjoying your outdoor space, let Clegg's help. Drew and I went on Saturday and they were packed. It was like 2 in the afternoon at Segan Lane location, and they were packed. Get on by. Buy local. Shop local. Tell them Matt sent you in when you see our friends at Clegg's Nursery. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. 
That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. It was a humid day Barefoot children play Looking for the summer shade Time to slip Like cypress stumps, your fruits are planted deep inside of me. Oh, it's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985 After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. All right, we'll do some Plucker's trivia. About 10 minutes. Uh, otter locks coming up as well. Nice night for the otter last night. A winning night for the otter last night. So, hopefully that, can you give him a ding? Hopefully we uh, we continue here with um, the madness upon us. Now we'll get Otter Locks here in about uh, about twenty minutes. Um, LSU football was back on the practice field on Wednesday, and afterwards, Garrett Nussmeyer, Mason Taylor, Greg Penn, Paris Shand, all met Mason with reporters. Taylor! All met with reporters, and it's the first time Nuss met with reporters so far in spring football. First time that he's met with reporters since taking over in this leadership role, but. One of the things that Nussmeyer said that probably, not probably, is the most pointed statement, the statement that's going to get the most attention, and he's not wrong for it, is when he was talking about uh, the expectations on the team this year. If you ask any of us that, we'll tell you we, we don't believe that that's the standard anymore. You know, going into year three, you know, in this system, not even on the field, but off the field, and, and how we do things on a daily basis, how we act, how we move around this building, how we do things outside of this building, it, it's all changed. And we hold ourselves to the standard to where we believe, like I said, 10 wins is not enough anymore. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, we have to win a national championship. That's not how we think, but it's about the little things. It's about doing the little things the right way, and that leads to a championship culture. 10 wins is not enough anymore. Now, he was clear, right? I'm not saying we have to win a natty. Of course, that's their goal. But 
10 wins is not enough anymore. And it's worth always throwing out this caveat that, yes, LSU has had back-to-back 10-win seasons under Brian Kelly, but they've really been nine-win seasons. They've been nine and three seasons with the bowl win, which got you to 10. Classify it however you want, but realistically, 10 wins in the regular season this year is getting you in the playoff. A 10-2 and season is getting you in the college football playoff. So that's got to be your baseline this year is 10 in the regular season. And then you want to make the playoffs and obviously win and keep advancing beyond that. But I love that the idea, and he's not running from it, is saying what we've done the last two years is no longer the expectation. It's to exceed that. To go 9-3, and win a bowl game, and get to 10. That's, that's not why we're here. We're here to go beyond that. The question is whether or not that's realistic. Now, remember, a year ago in fall camp, Brian Kelly sort of famously gave that interview where he said year three is when his teams have traditionally, uh, is when you could realistically expect to take that giant leap. And that's held true to form. We've gone through these numbers before. At each one of his stops, when they made the gigantic leap in year three, at Cincinnati, they had an undefeated year in year three. At Notre Dame was when they went 12-0 and and went to the BCS championship game and lost to Alabama. So in each of his stops, year three is when you saw the big kaboom. Now, it's hard to imagine that because you had the number one offense in the country and the Heisman Trophy winner last year. So how do you build on that? But, I mean, we could also very clearly look and say, hey, man, look at look at Les Miles' first three years. You had 05 and then 06. You had the four first-rounders, Jamarcus, Laurent, Dwayne Bow. Buster Davis. I mean, that 06 team was one of the most talented teams LSU ever had, but they fell short. Then year three, 07, is when they went on and won the national championship, even losing the number one pick in the draft, that quarterback, your two first-round wide receivers. Sound familiar? It was the next year when you had the veteran quarterback who had waited his turn, who stepped up and you won the national championship behind him in a really veteran roster. I'm not saying it's it's a repeat of 07, but a lot of that synergy is there, right? You can see the parallels. And clearly, it's a different postseason system, but you know, Vegas has LSU pegged over under 9.5, which is right where they've been, right? So can you go over? If you go over that number and get to 10-2, and two, you're a playoff team. But a large part of that is going to be Garrett carrying this offense. Listen, I think the defense is going to be better because it's impossible to imagine them being worse than literally the worst defense you ever fielded. So you're going to get better defensively. The question is how much better. But even a marginal increase defensively, if you go from being the 100th you know, ranked defense in the country to, the, to a, the 50th ranked defense in the country, you're not elite, but you're good enough to where an offense that scores 30 a game is going to win most every game you play. And I think that's really the ambition. Instead of giving up 28 a game, can you give up 20 a game? And can you score, instead of scoring 35, 38 a game, can you score 30 a game? If that's the case, you go win games 31, 21, you're going to win a lot of games. And I think that's going to be this team's objective moving forward if they can check all these boxes. So that's going to be, I think, the really interesting thing. Now, look, you're obviously replacing a lot of talent, as you heard Garrett say there, two first-round picks at receiver. But other than that, all of your offense is back, man. Um, clearly, you know, the wide receiver room, which is something Garrett talked about, the guys stepping up in that room, is something we're going to keep an eye on and who those guys are that make a move catching the ball. And, um, you know, I think they've all stepped up. You know, everybody is, has, you know, taken the advantage of their opportunities and, you know, they're doing whatever they can to help and, and um, you know, play at a high level. And I think, you know, our chemistry and, and right now our explosiveness has been very, very good because of that. Um, on the defensive side, I think it was so interesting hearing from Greg Penn about Blake Baker because not only is Greg Penn a returning veteran on your defense, but he plays the position Blake Baker coaches. And he was here when Blake Baker was here the last time. So Greg Penn was on the roster when Damone Clark had that gigantic season and plays that position at linebacker. So I don't know if there's anybody better to ask about the transition and the transformation Blake Baker can help make this defense than, than Greg Penn. 
Yeah, I think we're trying to build an identity of what we want to be. Uh, Coach Baker does a great job bringing energy to the room and to the whole defense as a whole. Us playing with fire, playing with enthusiasm, just trying to form an identity. Guys need to understand we're playing a whole new defense, so the guys are learning new plays and stuff like that. You're learning a new defense, but you're also learning under a guy that specifically coaches linebackers, and Greg Penn talked about that. I mean, he's obviously the D.C., so we get to understand the whole defense as a whole. We get the installs kind of before everybody else. He tells us what other people are doing, so it kind of makes us play faster. And, I mean, I would just say now, we're, as a whole, as a defense, we're not thinking as much. More reaction, more guys just fl flying around, playing, playing to their strengths. When you think about the second part of that, that's pretty stark, right? For a veteran guy, when you're halfway through spring ball, to say we're not thinking as much, we're playing faster, halfway through spring? I mean, that that's the most encouraging thing that I've heard. Like, if you've already had a material effect halfway through spring, you've still got the rest of spring, you've got your entire offseason watching film, you're going to have fall camp and then the season, like, how much better can that group be? That's, that's a really, really exciting part about watching this defense hopefully get better. Look, and I'm, I'm going to continue to maintain this. Far from a finished product, and obviously when you get into spring and then into fall camp, optimism abounds for everyone, and everyone's convinced that everybody's going to be an All-American and be the greatest ever. Uh, and sometimes it works out that way. But you know, I am very excited to see the progression with the defense as a whole, but I'm going to maintain this. They are not done on the defensive line. Like They are going to add at least one, at least one, Maybe two defensive linemen in the next portal window. You just you have to supplement those numbers there, or or your running game, your run defense is going to be a sieve. You just don't have the bodies. So keep improving, but far far from a finished product. All right, it's after further review. I were brought to you by Evermore. If you've been watching the show, I have a bottle of Evermore with me here on set every single day. Evermore is great tasting, all natural water. Uh, it is Mother Nature's masterpiece. It's natural artesian water. It's a rare alkaline source right there on the North Shore. And you might think to yourself, man, water from Louisiana? This it, <laughs> It's not your municipality you know, pulling water out and pumping it through a, a water purifier. No, no, no. This is all natural water from the ground. And I got to go tour the facility. It's incredible. The water never touches air. I mean, it's, it's drilled into a well deep, deep, deep into the ground. It's piped out into their, uh, into their filtration system and then into the bottles. It never touches air until you uncap it. If you want a healthier lifestyle, if you want better hydration, maybe you're a great athlete or someone who struggles to stay hydrated, Evermore is the answer. Maybe you just want a healthier option for your children. Evermore. It's a Louisiana product, a great Louisiana company. I mean, they've gone... National, they're one of the biggest brands in the country now. E V A M O R. Available at great local retailers. It's Evermore. E V A M O R. You can buy online at evermore.com or at great local retailers. Okay, it's after further review. We'll knock out a break. Uh, Muse will do a little Pluckers trivia with Muse when we come back. We'll have Jimmy here for Otter Locks. It's been a really good show. If you miss anything, of course, AFR on demand presented by Brett Golf. We had um, Bill Conley of ESPN was here in hour number one. Fun chat with Bill. He sort of um, put together a piece surmising how a 12 and 14 team college football playoff could select its team with a combination of subjective polls, you know, a committee and computers. That was a good conversation uh, if you missed it. Kim Mulkey was here uh, an, an hour ago, as was Wilson Alexander of The Advocate, Mama Scone just a bit ago with our uh, bracket challenge check in. So a ton there on demand. If you missed any of it, check it out. However, you get your podcasts. Just search after further review. And, of course, you can always check out the AFR YouTube channels, AFR Saints and AFR LSU, if you want short clips of our shows. Okay, it's after further review. Quick break. We'll do some Pluckers trivia, then Otter Locks to wrap up. Stay here. AFR. I was just telling you about Evermore. Uh, Evermore is available at Rouse's. And as a matter of fact, it's the third best-selling water at Rouse's behind the Rouse's brand and uh, and Ozarka, you know, the – the little the, 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 the flimsy plastic bottles, and then it's Evermore. But you can get it in all different sizes, Evermore, at, the, at Rouse's. And, of course, you can always get great seafood options. Coming up on another Friday in Lent, only a couple more Fridays in Lent left. And if you're, you know, obviously if you're Catholic or you're standing for meat and you're choosing seafood, 
Um, during uh, on, during Fridays and Lent, you can always get by Rouse's. They have great options or any day of the week. I mean, if you want a, a, a hearty, healthy lunch and you want to bypass the drive through go go to Rouse's. Just walk in, go to the left. You'll see all of their fresh and ready-made options, their hot and boiled kiosks. I love their sushi, which is amazing. If you want to go to the um, to their salad bar, so many great options. And, of course, Rouse's has been helping you make groceries for 100 years. It's Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Rouse's, this feels like home. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Elevate brand visibility, ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Flucker's Wing Bar, open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Flucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. All right, we're rolling along here on a hump day edition of AFR presented by Pluckers. Remember, if you get by Pluckers, they've got the Breggy Creole Wing Sauce. If you haven't tried it yet, it's an exclusive collaboration with Alex Bregman. We appreciate our guy, Steve Levy. Stevie Levy, the king of the wing, uh, for always being a great uh, partner of ours here for for so many years, man. And the uh, it's called the Breggy's Creole Crush. It's a collab with Alex Bregman uh, with his Breggy Bomb sauce and rub. So uh, if you go to Pluckers and you're going to order wings, get your Breggy's Creole Crush over at Pluckers. And uh, it's a nice cold beer. All right, uh, Muse, you ready? Let's do it. We do this every Wednesday, a little Pluckers trivia. Fire away. It's time for Pluckers trivia. How many will Muso get wrong today? Pluckers trivia. Every Wednesday night, 7.30 at Blue Bonnet, 8 o'clock at Nicholson. That's how you hit the post, Muse. Got it. Yeah, got it. Sure. Okay.
When we were in New York last week. I don't know why, but Eric had Family Feud on. Great show. Well, no, it is a great show. I get a lot of the Steve Harvey clips on my TikTok for some reason. He's, well, I know he's I, awesome. Because they're hilarious. Yeah, but, he's hilarious. Um, I was going to bed, and for whatever, she was staying up, and like she watches TV at night. And she probably watched like 37 episodes of the Family Feud. I mean, right. I, like, I what? get it. Like, why? Why are you just stuck on Family Feud? We're it, in New York. Put something else on. Family Feud, it's one of those games, like, if you're watching it, it is impossible to not play along. It's impossible. Yeah. I always wonder. It's got to just be the pressure of cameras and lights that make people go brain dead at times because some of the stuff they say is just so stupid. Yeah. Anyway. Makes for great clips, though, like you're saying, man. I mean, it is. <laughs> like, you going on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Harvey's looking. All right, Muse, number one. All right. Uh, in standard hockey rules, how many minutes are issued for a minor penalty? Two minutes. Yes! There we go. I noticed you give yourself a big ding like that. When everybody else gets something right, you just do the ding. Well, that's because the, that small ding is on uh, the same button bar as our bed music here. It, it, it would sound like this. That's just, that's mm -hmm. awful. Tell yourself whatever you want there, Muse. You got 15 computers over there. You can make it work. Uh, just a little planning, Muse. A little planning. You okay. could have it. Tell me you couldn't have it on another pot. Uh, we could, yeah. Yeah, you could. But choose not to, because I think you want the big ding, not the little ding. That's not true. Whenever I got Mama Scone's bracket right earlier, I gave myself the little ding. Nothing. All right, tell yourself whatever you want. You gave yourself a little ding? Yeah, it's, we well, no, you want it. a big ding. We're one for one so far. You gave yourself a little ding. Two for did. two if you count the bracket question. All right, Muse, here we go. Yep. On what series did Reese Witherspoon voice the character Greta Wolfcastle in a 2002 episode? The TV series? Like, huh? Okay. Um, Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a lot of cartoons, man. Um, I have a guess on this. Uh, Greta Wolfcastle. I... Uh, Recess. I have no idea. It was The Simpsons. Ah, yeah. See, not a Simpsons guy. I liked the movie. Simpsons movie was hilarious. They've just had an incredible history of getting famous people to voice characters on that show. I, I feel like a lot of shows do that, though, because no. you know, famous people are on shows. No, 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 so, no, 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 you know. No. The, one of the things, and I, I don't watch The Simpsons either, but one of the things that is so notable about The Simpsons, aside from their insanely long three-plus decade run... And their predictions. is Yes, is uh, the celebrities that they've gotten to voice characters on that yeah. show, which is kind of stunning uh, how they've been able to do that over the years. But Okay, last one, Muse. Yeah. The Leaning Tower of Pisa leans in what direction? I'm going to assume this is a total guess on your part, but no. you got a 25% chance of getting it wait, right. Wait, wait, are you mean, is it like left or right, or is it like the, the actual direction, north, south, east, west? The direction. In what direction? Okay, I'm... I, I said lean left or right. Muse, that's that a direction. That depends on where you're standing. That's why I was like, wait a minute. Uh, what are okay. you talking about? Go on the other side, it's leaning left. Go on this side, it's leaning right. That's the stupidest thing you ever could have said. No, it's what not. No, no, it's not. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> no, it's not. What direction? It only looks that way because you're wearing one shoe. <laughs> <laughs> That's very well done there. You get a little ding. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with east on that one. Uh, you were wrong. It's uh, south. All right. So, Muse with the losing record again. All is right in the world. <laughs> it's after further left or right. Paulie, he said left or right. I mean, Paul, you know, what are you going to get it right? Just walk on the backside. Oh, he's leaning to the right. It's a direction. Oh, my God. Oh, man. It is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Holy crap. 
Ooh, you are a counterphobic six, Muse. Uh, no, you're not. You're just a regular six. No, I'm a counterphobic six. You're a phobic six is what you are. I'm not a phobic six. You're a phobic six is what you That's are, Muse. That's a lie. Oh, my goodness. Woo. Uh, we had Enneagram this week. <laughs> you just dig in your heels, bro. It's the stupidest thing. It's a direction. It is a direction. Muse, we're talking about in what direction the leading tower of Pisa leads. Mm. Are you kidding me? Left or right, just depending on where you stand in relation to the building, it can right. be left or right. Then there would be no correct answer. Mm. It's impossible to get it wrong. Oh, my God. If, <laughs> unless if you're standing on the wrong <laughs> side of the building. It's after further review. AFR. Brought to you by Darren James and Associates, brokered by LPT Realty. I tell you this much, Darren James knows his directional coordinates because when he's coming to your house to sell it, he's got to know, are you north, are you south, are you east, are you west? No matter where you live, Darren James will get your home sold faster for more money. Call him today, 335-7666, 335-7666. That's Darren's cell. That's his cell phone. You know any realtors that give their cell phone out? Over the radio and daily radio ads? Darren James does it. Text him right now. What up, DJ? Just heard Scone talking about you. Need to sell my home. Can you help? I guarantee you, boom, you'll get a response right away. Time it. within. Si I guarantee if you text Darren James right now, you get a response within 60 seconds. In the 225-335-7666, 335 or agent225.com. That's agent225.com. Buying or selling, you need Darren James. Think real estate, think Darren James. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. Extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 20 
After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Flucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Flucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Dallas Jones, we come final segment here uh, on a uh, hump day edition of AFR, presented by Pluckers. We're glad to have you aboard with us. Always glad to tell you about Pure Restoration, pure-restoration.com. Kill mold, remove odor. If you have or think you might have mold, our friends over at Pure Restoration can help you out. If you can't remember the name of the website, just shoot me a message anywhere. Scone, what's the mold thing you always talk about? Well, it's Pure Restoration, pure-restoration.com. It's a patented, non-toxic, dry fog. They're the best. They can be more efficient and more cost-effective. Give them a shout. My guy Jim Woodworth and the gang over there at Pure Restoration. Pure-Restoration.com. Pure-Restoration.com. One thing left to do. Find out what we're betting on tonight. Time for Otter Locks. Otter Locks. Presented by Lofton Staffing Services. At Lofton, we put people to work. Call us today at 924-0200 or go to lofton.jobs. So we turn to the one and only, the incomparable and incomprehensible, the outfather himself, Jimmy Ott. Otter, how are you? Well, let's get to it, baby. At the okay. Borobaz, get your little pen ready. No Got time it. to chit chat. Got Money it. line. Money line. Four dogs, one out right last night in NIT. The minor bowls. You don't know who gives a crap or who does. St. Joe's, SMU, UNLV, Appalachian State, San Francisco. Five of them. Okay, five money line plays. St. Joe's, SMU, UNLV, App State, and San Francisco. Money line favorite parlay. Montana State, do it in game with Bond, Bradley, and Philadelphia. Montana State, Bradley, and Villanova. Has one of those already started? Uh, Yeah, Montana State. Okay, Montana State, Bradley, and Villanova. Money line parlay. All right, Charlie Charlie Chalk, Hannah Grip. Money line parlay in the NBA. All Chalk. Phoenix, Clippers, Golden State, Oklahoma City, and Boston. Phoenix, Clippers, Oklahoma State. Wait, Golden State? Golden State, Oklahoma City, and Boston. All right. And best bet of the night, Boise State plus three and a half by the four. Boise plus four is the best bet of the night. Okay. Um, Anything you're looking at tomorrow that uh, uh, you might want to give out as a lean? Well, we're going to be on at 11, but no, I like Mississippi State in the first game. It's pretty good. Okay. Um. All right, man. That's a lot. Okay. So money line play. Same. Well, jo- I mean, well, look. I'm I'm with Charlie and Squeaky. Do you think I want to talk to these guys? I mean, I want to. <laughs> no, you can hang out. The best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. The best part <laughs> about your show last year, uh, on the first day of the tournament at the Bow, was I yeah. remember listening, and there was a group of guys who clearly had bet some. On over in the first half, yeah, yeah. and they were just living and dying with it right next to you, and it, it didn't work. As I recall, it didn't work out for them, which made it even well, more even funny. Well, I bet all 32 first half unders, mm. and I love. I, I was just fine with that little that little response last year. Third, so, so is that something you're going to do again tomorrow? All of them. I do it every year. Obviously, small. Now it only includes. It's the first four. So these four today and last night. And then the 28 games that don't involve a team that's already played. Okay. It's the first game tournament jitters is Got what it. I'm playing. The tentativeness, you know. Got it. Um, like, like 18 and 14 last year, 22 and 10 the year before. 62% over the last 10 years. Okay. Uh, I mean, 62%. You will make money, uh, essentially. Yeah. And, and, and look, it's, it's not a trend, but it just... I believe in the angle, and there's enough over money to kind of keep it from getting a really tough line. So okay. went one and one, one and one last night. All Virginia's right. still trying to score. Virginia scored 14 <laughs> points. <laughs> I mean, but Matt. Uh, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. You see the 68 team feel. If I told you a team is going to do this, you have one guess, and the other 67 don't count. It's Virginia. I mean, who's it's who's Virginia. not going to pick Virginia? It's Virginia. <laughs> It's so bad. I'll, I'll tell you what. One thing is good. I'm done losing money on them. Oh, They're man. Done. Our, buddy, <laughs> our buddy Mark Zeno was with us earlier this week. and he, Oh, wait. <laughs> me play it, Muse. Virginia shouldn't get into this tournament with a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia shouldn't get a tournament with a ticket. Did you see? How about Musso's uh, text last night? The shot of 
Virginia basketball is Iowa football. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I saw one that said Brian Perez yeah. thinks Virginia's yeah. offense is awesome. Yeah. Good uh, job, Moose. I was busy cooking beans for my son and still getting him ready for the week. So, so you know, good. That was good. All right, so I'm yeah, man, Revise. 11 to 1. Yeah, yeah, look, we got Randy McKay. Uh, if you want to uh, on demand, his picks are up. He went 6 and 1 last week. We've got handicappers every day, you know, tomorrow and Friday as well. So, lots of picks. 11 to 1 uh, from the bow. One minute right remaining. You'll hear Ott, Hanny, and the whole gang. Uh, get your picks. Make sure you're locked into those guys. 11 to 1 uh, for the remainder of the week. All right, Otter. Good luck. We appreciate one, one, it, man. Real, yep. And yep. if you can't make it to the bow, make it over to the Queen Casino at the DraftKings Sportsbook there. So, Great vibe over there. Great vibe over at the Queen. All right, Otter. We appreciate Thank it, man. You, Thank you. Good luck. All right. Be well. We're brought to you by Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Michelle.com, Michelle.com. Man, awesome people. Thrilled to talk about that great company, which has been around for more than 75 years. Based right there in their Harahan office with more than 30 offices across 11 different states. You weigh or measure something. Our friends at Michelle sell, service, rent the products that you use to weigh and measure. There's just nobody better. So check them out online at Michelle.com. ISO 17025 accreditation is there for you. And they'll love to do business with a handshake and a smile. It's Michelle weighing and measurement, Michelle.com, Michelle.com. All right, we're out of here. Muse Polly, I appreciate it. Have a great night. See you tomorrow, three. AFR. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 